Sony Sports West, the heart of the fan. Every superhero has an origin story. The legend of the spectacular Shohei Otani began a decade ago, a world away. Across the Pacific, the legend has only grown. The spectacular Shohei continues to do the superhuman. Shohei Otani, the spectacular one. What fantastic feat will he accomplish next? from the Big A, Halos and the Chicago White Sox. Shohei Otani is on the hill. Japanese Heritage Night here at the Big A. A puzzle giveaway of Shohei Otani. He is the unicorn. He is the most puzzling player in the history of the game because nobody can figure out just how he does it. Is he real? He's heading out to the outfield with Ipe back on the bump. What a season. What a June. And a new angel, a new American. Eduardo Escobar in Florida this morning. Passes with flying colors, USA. And he's back here tonight. Not starting, but maybe off the bench to win it for the Halos. Mark Gubaza, Mark Langston, a Patrick O'Neill. Puzzling, right? Otani, I mean, what a night. Yeah. Good, happy Gooby Tuesday, of course. It all comes together. How do you explain what we're seeing from Shohei Otani? I, I don't think it's possible. I mean, what he is doing, swinging the bat. I mean, again, he hit another home run yesterday, 446 feet. His last time out against the Dodgers, he struck out 12. I mean, he's done everything incredible. Over 100 strikeouts a season, over 25 home runs. No one in the history of the game has ever done that. So I don't know how we explain it. I really have no idea, Langer. Well, it'll be this. He's <laughs> leading almost every category on the Angels, whether it's offensive or whether it's pitching. I think there's only two or three that he does not lead on the Angels as far as being at the top. And you look at throughout the major leagues, he is right there at the tops. Big night here at the Big A. Big crowd expected here. Obviously, with Shohei on the mound, you talked about a puzzle. He is the puzzle. Try to figure him out. That's what every team tries to do every time he's on the mound is try to figure out which sequence Pachoy is going to use. We've been seeing the fastball usage a lot more in recent games, but he's got that wipeout sweep of slider that he likes to use to punch out a lot of guys. So you're going to have to figure that out as we get a little deeper into this game. Yeah, that Japanese uh, puzzle, right? The Otani puzzle is a 100-piece puzzle. It would take about that many to figure it out exactly. He is absolutely incredible. And versus the Dodgers... He was using that fastball, had 12 strikeouts, the most of any bit, uh, pitcher in Angels history against L.A. Dodgers. Well, he, he used 50% of his usage of fastballs. That, that's way higher than his norm on his average. That's six punch outs. His fastball was electric. He can paint the corners glove side with his fastball. He is absolutely dominating. When you look at the Dodgers, they're a team that generally doesn't strike out a lot. They work counts. They put the ball in play. But Shohei was great in that game, using all his pitches there. He used his cutter a little bit more, and he has used his cutter more over his last three starts but what a dynamic pitcher he is on the mound was, I think his last few starts though he's really determined to get better balance over the pitching rubber and I think because of that he's been working downhill especially with his fastball yeah certainly with Shohei it's all about working ahead when he works ahead he's nobody better at finishing guys off you talk about the fastball usage that four seam fastball opponents are hitting just 129 this year against that four seam fastball so that's why we're starting to see the usage of the fastball that sweeper that's where he's made some mistakes Stakes of it and he was throwing it so much I think the hitters were starting to get comfortable with it and when he made that mistake they were ready for it so now with that being said let's go to the number one. Oh, by the way he could touch 101 with that number one so with that I love everything about Shohei from that fastball usage and then when he gets to that sweeper and the last start we also saw the splitter come back into play yeah, and he even mixed in a couple curveballs but an angel record versus the Dodgers with 12 strikeouts that was impressive so tonight's starting pitcher making his 16th start also leads the majors in homers in ribbies in OPS in slugging he's stolen 10 bases he's six and three at home a career 2-1-1 ERA second best at home in 100 years and the home run he hit last night 
Langer, the sound is what got you. That's what got me. The, certainly the sound off the bat. As soon as you hit it, Gooby, we stood in that outfield a lot out there, and we know during batting practice, when you hear a certain sound, you pay attention. That sound alerted me immediately that this ball was gone, and then the majestic carry that he got it mm. was off the charts. I mean, 6.4 seconds hang time. That is a Hall of Fame punt in the <laughs> NFL. I mean, he's that good. That's Ray Guy-like yes. on the punt. And then you look at the launch angle. That's how he was able to get that break of ball and lift it and go that far. We have a launch Launch angle like that, an exit velocity of 113, it is going to go 446 feet. So it was great to see him be able to get down there on that slider hit. He's hit a lot of breaker balls out this season. He's hit a bunch of fastballs and even some change-ups of late, but that breaker ball, he is crushed. That, that animation, well, that's just fantastic. That's such a great look, man, the technology. The animation to, to kick off the show that you voiced is pretty cool also. <laughs> that was cool, but when you look at Leeds MLB and home runs, RBI and OPS, and yes, he's got 117 yeah. strikeouts. That's why he is the unicorn, the spectacular Shohei. What about when he's when he's pitching, when he's on the bump, how he's able to hit this season in particular? Yeah, well, when he hits this year, it, the numbers are off the charts. He's been so good. And I always thought, believe me, I had a brief time in, in standing at home plate and getting the chance to hit. And I always thought the chance, when I got up to the home plate on the days that I pitched, I was way more focused. I could see it. I couldn't hit it like Shohei. But when you pitch, you're, you're, you have razor-sharp focus. And for Shohei, he takes that to the plate this year. The numbers have been outstanding. I still think this baseball had some more room to go in Baltimore. It was 459. It was going right towards Boog's Barbecue. That baseball crushed that gate out there in right center field. When you look at his numbers so far when he's pitched, he's at 375 with three home runs. Three different times when he's been on the mound, he was one hit away, a hit of certain kind, whether it was a double or a home run from hitting for the cycle. That's how incredible he has been. An OPS of 1130 and a slugging percentage of 661. Normally when you're pitching, you're just happy to be able to walk to the mound. Yeah. He's crushing the baseball and running around the bases. What's well, amazing. One hit shy of the cycle, not once, not twice, but three separate times. And that's something that hasn't happened in the history of the game. And he's almost done it three times this season alone. He's already running away with the MVP. And, and let's face it, this should be the third straight year that yeah. he's going to win it. But he's going to win two out of three. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable what he's doing. Yeah, but all he cares about, and which is great to see, hear that and see that, is about winning. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone feels that it's contagious around in that dugout right now. And they've had a little few ups and downs this season, but six games over 500 chance to be able to add on here again today with Shoei on the mound. Everything's about getting his team together and start winning some baseball games. And because of Shoei, he's carried his team on his shoulders quite a bit. I totally agree. And every time Shohei takes the mound, always when your ace takes the mound, you feel really good about that. And every time he takes the mound, you expect to win. That's why that last start against the Dodgers, you can't pitch much better. One run, 12 strikeouts, and he suffered the loss. So the Angels offense has got to step in a little bit. But oh, by the way, he could be part of that Angels offense. That is the one unique thing that Shohei brings to the table. We've seen it this year. You talked about the three home runs, 10 RBIs for Shohei the day he pitches. So uh, you always expect a lot every time Shohei takes the mound here at the Big A because his numbers are just really good at the Big A compared to on the road. Yeah, that, that would do it all if he was to get the win, you know, go eight, punch out 13, and hit a home run. It, it is, uh, is that your call, Patrick? Pass, so I'm going to go ahead and call I it. Like it. I like it. I uh, like it. You know, I want to send out a special congratulations to Eduardo Escobar. This is such a great story yes. because he's now an American citizen. He took care of that business in Florida, passed the test. He sent out an Instagram post. You can just tell how enthused and, and proud his, he his is. His smile is infectious. When he walked into the dugout the other day for the first time with his new teammates, I was walking around. I'm like, has this guy been here for 20 years already? Everybody loves Eduardo Escobar. I mean, he, every teammate he's ever played with, everybody thinks he is a winner. He puts everything all together. But what that smile right now, what a moment that is for him and his family. Yeah, no doubt about it. And when you get the opportunity to do that, and that was one of the things that made him nervous. He got traded. He already had this all scheduled when he was with the Mets, and he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do it. The Angels said, by all means, you go and you take care of business. He was able to do it. Got it done. He's back here at the Big A. We'll probably see him in the lineup maybe tomorrow, but yeah. uh, what, what an accomplishment 
punishment to go. It's, it's something he's been wanting to do for a long time, achieve that goal here today. Yeah, and you got to prepare for that test. Yes, that's, I mean, that, that's, that, that's a hard test. I don't test. think I could pass it. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I mean, that's fantastic. So congrats to Eduardo. Let's go USA. Let's go Shohei Otani. We'll take a break. Uh, this is Japanese Heritage Night. Shohei Otani is on the bump. I don't know how this lined up, but it did. It's going to be a sellout crowd. We will see something spectacular. Also, want to remind everybody, vote for Mike Trout. Phase two. And Erica Weston with Jacob Webb. That interview on the other side of Angels Live. Keep it locked. The power is beyond the field. Together. 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 You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Things are heating up. Packing all today's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. Oh my goodness! What a play! Every game. Go! Every night. Swing and a miss! Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today preview tomorrow the quickest way to catch up on all the action we've got you covered on quick pitch late nights and early mornings only on mlb network It's our Angels Live pregame. Halos and the White Sox. I'm alongside Mark Gubaza and Mark Langston as Shohei Otani is on the bump. What do you think, Gooby? Does this get does this get his juices flowing a bit? I mean, yeah, he's you know what he's always focused on what he's gonna do, but I'll tell you what I am right now. I'm out of my mind. This is so cool. And there's this uh, really awesome new samurai warrior right next to the life-size Shohei bobblehead here in the concourse. You gotta check it out uh, when you get out here. We're gonna take a look at some of the spectacular feats we have seen from Shohei Otani. You can just pick the month of June alone, Langer, and, and, and we'd be all set. What a month, what a year, what a season. Yeah, the month of June leads the majors in home runs with 11 home runs here in the month of June. The guy who's number two is in the lineup for the White Sox. Luis Robert Jr.'s got nine, but Shohei with hey, 11. Let's hear it. Unbelievable start to the month of June. And Shohei, he's been carrying on both ends. It's just so fun to watch what he's capable of doing. Uh, amazing when you think he's got eight home runs at 440 feet or more. And that's tops in all of baseball. The home run last night going 446. Five games with 10 or more strikeouts. Second most in Major League Baseball. Shohei Otani last time out with 12 against Dodge. Only player, the only player in MLB history with 100 plus strikeouts and 25 plus home runs. By the way, we're just at the halfway yeah. point of the season. That's the thing. It's unreal. So you're thinking maybe 200 strikeouts, 50 home runs in one season. Well, he's on pace for, yes. for more than that. On, on that's, just both un cases. that's just unreal. It's, he is a unicorn. It's, you're never going to see a player like this, I don't think, in the history of the game. You can go another 100 years before something like this comes up. You, you know, we're down here, and I'm starting to see the little gnats that he was trying to swat yeah. away. They're starting to come over this yeah. direction. <laughs> but not only did he swat the gnats away, and then all of a sudden hit it 445 feet right, right afterwards, nothing seems to phase this guy. 
And the focus that you have to have to be on the mound, we, you, we've gone through all the numbers, to be able to have this kind of focus when you're pitching, and then all of a sudden you got to put a different hat on, step up the home plate, and you are asked to contribute in the lineup. You're just not the number nine hitter in the lineup. You are the number two hitter in this lineup and are expected to deliver and bring stuff. The focus that this guy has is second to none. I, and again, I don't know if we will ever see a player like Shohei Otani to be able to accomplish what he's been done so far. Yeah, I, I think part of it too is as a hitter, he's thinking, what would he, what would I be trying to get him out with? So I think that's what's made him such a good hitter. I mean, that, you can think that too sometimes, but his work ethic and his focus makes him that incredible, that much more incredible than anybody's ever played the game because there's nothing that intimidates him. There's nothing that slows him down other than the fact he just wants to win. That's it. Back to what you said, right? All he, all he cares yeah. about is winning. They did that last night. Mike Trout, who scored that uh, walk-off on the wild pitch. He stole third, and then he was able to score on the wild pitch. We want to remind everybody, you got to vote for Mike Trout yes. phase two. Langer, you said it perfectly. I, now, I think Goo but you can also explain those first round those votes don't count yeah. they got it fans need to go and vote every day it ends on Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific kind of gives the East Coast a little bit of an advantage there because they get you know noon Hey, this is slide alone look how far he slides on the belly forever it's like he's on snow right there just <laughs> flying through and scores but it was all about that secondary lead he took yeah he had a tough you know, first three at bats. Work the walk. I love his reaction when Shohei walk. They both steal a base and then he eventually scores with a wild pitch. Mike Trout with 30 extra base hits this season, including 17 home runs. There's not an all-star game without Mike Trout in the all-star game. So everyone get out there and vote for Mike Trout because you know what? That's what we all want to see. Mike Trout and Shohei Otani in the all-star game. It's going to happen. Everybody's got their device, their phone in their hand right now. It's not too far if it's not in your hand. Go ahead and scan that QR code and vote for Mike Trout or go to MLB.com slash vote. All right, Gooby, you're going up there. You're calling the game with yes. uh, Wayne. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the, the energy level here already today. It's, you, know, if, you know what? These are the games that's really, really fun just because you know the fans are going to be so into this like we are. We're fans. We're it, fans of the game right now. It's uh, Shohei on the bump. It's a Gooby Tuesday. Uh, well, well done working that out. I don't know how many times. That's how I roll. How you do that. He loves you. All right, so thanks, Gooby. Have a great call. Appreciate it, guys. Go All get them. Right. Langer sticking around, and we're going to come back with more Angels Live and Erica Weston on the other side. Jacob Webb did a great job last night in relief catch up with webby with erica next welcome into the rally studios joshua perry here alongside russell dorsey russ phase two of mlb all-star game voting has begun what is the toughest decision to make i think it's catcher in the national league you got sean murphy in his first year for the atlanta braves who played really well and then will smith in la with the Dodgers has proven he's one of the best catchers in the league. Will be fun to watch. You can catch more stories like this Wednesday on The Rally, right here on Valley Sports. Hey, kids. Join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. I love the boys and girls clubs because they help you believe that you can make it to the big leagues. Big leagues or what? Law. Art. Construction. Baseball. How'd you guess? <laughs> With the help of Major League Baseball, the boys and girls clubs of America help kids make it to the big leagues of anything.
ladies and gentlemen, hope you're ready for this one after the Angels took game one. Walk it off. Mike Trout scoring the game-winning run. Bottom of the ninth inning. 2-1 victory on a wild pitch. Second walk-off wild pitch of the season for the Angels. And he told Erica Weston afterwards, that a lot, a lot of baby powder. <laughs> a lot it. of baby, yeah. That's not why you he's not see. in the lineup here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he was having trouble breathing. He had to get away from that as fast as he could. But it just goes to show you how many uh, different ways that Mike Trout can beat you. Not only hitting the ball out of the ballpark. And the speed. We don't see the speed very much from Mike Trout anymore. He doesn't steal bags, but he picks big moments. And that was a big moment to steal third base. And then you get to see. It doesn't take very much for him to score a run right here. And Brendahl's got to go down and block that. It's scooted away. Trout was able to read that perfectly and score the winning run. So uh, great win for the Angels. They needed that win, certainly with the pitching performance they got from yep. Reed Detmers last night. Yeah, listen, Carlos Estevez was great, but also Jacob Webb, a nice bridge right there to, to get to Estee who picked up the W last night after a really solid performance by Reed Detmers. That's what happens when Shohei pitches the day after Detmers. <laughs> you barely mentioned him, but we should. He was fantastic. But our Erica West had a chance to speak to Jacob Webb about his performance last night. All right, guys, thanks very much. Jacob, first off, want to get back to the win last night. Crazy. All right, guys, thanks very much. Jacob, first off, want to get back to the win last night. Crazy walk-off, wild pitch action. Uh, what's your takeaway after watching that one unfold? I mean, it was awesome. It was electricity going through the whole stadium you know it's it, it's nice to to be a part of a, a first walk-off win here um you know looking forward to, to keep it rolling and, and uh keep getting some wins were you still in the dugout when it happened oh yeah i stayed out here uh actually one of the first times i've stayed out here um just because it's a tie game and you know i kind of want to see how it unfolded but yeah you picked a good one to stay out there for sure um when you got a guy on the mound last night like reed he's doing what he's doing and you come in throw a scoreless inning um i don't want to say pressure but just the opportunity to continue giving this team a chance to win knowing that it was a pitcher's duel yeah i mean reed, reed's a great pitcher it was awesome to watch him uh you know dominate yesterday and give us a chance basically the whole, the whole game you know it's it's uh what we work for every day and you know and just me coming in right there I'm also trying to do the same thing you know he, he pitched such a great game I want to keep that score right there and give us a chance to win the ball game you've come in in some pretty big situations whether there's guys on base or it's a clean inning like you had last night I know it's not the World Series we talked about this before but how are you able to kind of maintain your poise out there and slow everything down uh, just like you just said right now just slow everything down and, and uh, take it one pitch at a time that's really really the, the mentality out there is you know and just trying to attack guys and and get out Last one for you. It's Shohei Day. Um, we know how spectacular it is, so I got to ask you about him. Um, we've talked about it briefly in Texas, but uh, the season he's having right now, what he's doing on the mound, and obviously at the at the plate, uh, what's it like being a teammate with him? I mean, it's awesome. You know, watch him work day in and day out. It's it's very special. It, it, he's he's a great teammate and also just a great competitor out there. You can tell he's got a little bit of a of a snarl to him this year every time he goes out there uh, it's uh, it's cool to watch you know thanks for the time jacob uh, we wish you the continued success moving forward the rest of the way yeah thank you all right guys eric a great job as usual nice that you can see how special it is to jacob webb right to be here with this team and to contribute in meaningful ball games yeah when you're from southern california from riverside to be able to play for a team that you look watch when you were younger it's always a thrill jacob webb you look for the guys that can bridge the gap to get to carlos status he has been one of those guys that phil nevin feels very confident in and no matter what the situation he will bring him in the assortment of pitches that he has too that will work from the standpoint he's got 96 mile an hour fastball he can pitch up in the zone he's got a swing and miss a wipeout changeup to go with that great slider three quality pitches and that's why we've seen Phil Nevin use him in these big moments we've seen him come in with bases loaded that you have to be Houdini to get out of those and he has been Houdini he's been excellent guy to bridge the gap to get to Carlos Estevez. your thoughts on the bullpen in general right now yeah I mean obviously it's going to get healthier Matt Moore is closing the gap on it we will see him soon but obviously a, a guy like Jacob Webb is going to be that guy that even when Matt Moore comes back is still going to maintain his role. I know Chris Stavinsky's had a couple of hiccup 
games, yep. but he's been a guy that's been real reliable for the Angels out in that bullpen. So it's only going to get better with Matt Moore, and he should be returning soon. Yeah, yeah, spoke to him briefly, not quite ready, but uh, he'll get back and he'll definitely help this team down the stretch. Uh, Langer, we're going to let you go. I know you're pumped up for this one. Buddy. I am. This is going to be I can't great. Wait. And these fans out there watching Shohei Otani throw, you know, just get warmed up out there in the bullpen. That's the spot to be. Great job, Langer. Thanks, pal. Always fun. We're filling you in, getting you ready for showtime next. It's not what we ride that defines us. It's what happens. It's the modern baseball show for the modern baseball fan. Off base with interviews and coverage of baseball's hottest stars. I've done a couple interviews in my life. This probably is the most fun I've ever been a part of. Only on MLB Network. I love the boys and girls clubs because they help you believe that you can make it to the big leagues. Big leagues to what? Law. Art. Construction. Baseball. How'd you guess? <laughs> With the help of Major League Baseball, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America help kids make it to the big leagues of anything. and coverage all day every day your way on mlb network game which was today you fans can redeem free medium fries with a one dollar minimum purchase at participating socal mcdonald's so if you haven't done it go ahead and download that mcdonald's app today and you can get some free fries tomorrow only costs a buck and those kids are awesome hey Shohei Otani is on the bump and he's had great success against chicago two career starts one don't know a 087 era with 18 k's here's the angels lineup against michael kopech who has a 299 as a matter of fact Chicago starters, month of June, a 299 ERA, which is the best in the month of June, but only one win by the starters. So we'll see if the Angels line up. No Mike Trout, just an off day, but you see Moniak, Otani, Drury, one, two, three, and Shohei looking to help himself out here tonight as he is on the bump. Japanese Heritage Night, Wayne Randazzo, Mark Gubaza, Erica Weston on the other side. Enjoy it. At Pechanga Resort Casino, you can... Big leaguers from 17 different countries come out to play during MLB Network's International Week. Our national pastime unites nations, cultures, and hearts alike, filled with players who bring dedication and diversity to the diamond. MLB Network celebrates this success with a week filled with the biggest moments, in-depth interviews, and unparalleled insight from TV's best baseball analysts. It's Baseball Without Borders on International Week, all week on MLB Network. Batting averages are up this year. There's less downtime than ever before. Those are two his wind up first pitch. And this ball's hit a wall. High drive. At the wall. See ya. That ball's out of here. That is long gone. Out of here. Live Black Afri audio from every major league club. Video of minor league games. Plus highlights and look-ins on MLB Big Inning. The all-new At Bat is only $3.99 per month. Subscribe within the MLB app today.
Sports of LA, Valley Sports West, the heart of the fan. Every superhero has an origin story. The legend of the spectacular Shohei Otani began a decade ago, a world away. Across the Pacific, the legend has only grown. The spectacular Shohei continues to do the superhuman. Shohei Otani, the spectacular one. What fantastic feat will he accomplish next? The spectacular Shohei pitches on a spectacular night here at Angel Stadium. It's game two of a four-game series between the Los Angeles Angels and the Chicago White Sox on Japanese Heritage Night at Angel Stadium. Alongside Mark Gubiza, I'm Wayne Randazzo, and Gooby, we keep calling Shohei spectacular. We don't have a lot of words that we can use here in this booth, but for Shohei, he continues to dazzle every time he touches the ball or the bat. Wayne, it's unbelievable what he's doing. He's swinging the bat exceptionally well. He's throwing the baseball very, very hard. And when you look at how many times he's hit a baseball over 440 feet, that's eight times this year for home runs. Most in Major League Baseball home run last night went 446 feet with a 36 degree launch angle. Five games with 10 or more strikeouts, second most in baseball, including 12 last time out against the Dodgers, which is an Angels record for strikeouts versus the Dodgers. And the only player in Major League history with 100 plus strikeouts, 25 plus home runs in the season. And we're only at the halfway point. He has been absolutely dominant and he's absolutely crushed the Chicago White Sox. 13 home runs and OPS of 1079, also with 18 strikeouts and ERA under one, Wayne. For all the mind-blowing things he does, he's got a shot at a 50-homer season at the plate and 200 strikeouts on the mound. Last night, a wild win. The Angels pulled it off with a walk-off wild pitch. We'll have more on that in just a moment. tonight the ultimate late night baseball party see the night's biggest moments <laughs> the best interviews we all love dj Dan. and cutting edge analysis from tv's best this one takes the cake that is awesome mlb tonight late nights on mlb network wake up to baseball's biggest stories robert floor is wearing tweed wake up to big name guests very special guests hanging out on the crush red velvet this show is tough to get ready for and wake up to a whole lot of fun Wearing a robe holding a wooden phone. Oh. MLB Central. It is absolutely hilarious. Oh. The show baseball fans and baseball players wake up to. Show's starting to pick up. I love the energy. I love the unexpected performances. Weekday mornings on MLB Network. We'll have a little fun and we'll laugh. It's a nice steady rhythm to the games now with the pitch timer. Can't look away. And the pitch. And a ground ball toward the home base hit. They're going to wave him in. He is up with every team on MLB Network wherever you go. Just download the MLB app, click MLB Network, and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way.
Angels won a game on a walk-off wild pitch. It's the only two walk-off wins they've had this season. The first team in the modern era, dating back to at least 1920, to have accomplished that. It took game one. We'll see how game two goes with Shohei on the mound. You want highlights? Quick pitch has you covered. Things are heating up. Packing all today's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. Oh my goodness! What a play! Every game. Go! Every night. Swing and a miss! Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today, preview tomorrow. The quickest way to catch up on all the action? We've got you covered. On Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. Sunday on the next episode of MLB's Carded. Join Greg Amsinger for a look at all things cardboard. From vintage to modern, we've got it covered. MLB's Carded, Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network. Batting averages are up this year. There's less downtime than ever before. Goes into his windup, first pitch, and this ball's hit. Yeah. High drive. Got the wall. See ya. That ball's out of here. That is wrong. Live Black Afri audio from every major league club, video of minor league games, plus highlights and look-ins on MLB Big Inning. The all-new At Bat is only $3.99 per month. Subscribe within the MLB app today. on to the field. He's the starting pitcher tonight. The Major League's home run and RBI leader on the mound for the Halos in game two of this series against the White Sox. And he's been locked in of late, Wayne, too. I love the fact that he's been using all his pitch, especially his fastball. My go-tos for show Edo Otani to continue. Great balance on the mound and using his pitch as well. It's continued increased fastball use. That fastball has been excellent for show Edo. Touching 100, 101 miles an hour and keep the batters guessing. On the secondary pitch, he's been using his cut a little bit more than his sweeper. Mixed in some splitters and an occasional curveball. So as a hitter, you never know what secondary pitches Shohei will throw. What we do know is he'll face this lineup weighted on base average. The league average is 320, really a formula that includes any way a player can reach base. And Luis Roberts been the best at it for the White Sox this year. Really one of the few above average offensive players the White Sox have had. Tim Anderson well below average, certainly eye-poppingly well below average for Anderson this year as he bats second for the White Sox against Shohei tonight. It'll be real interesting, too, for this White Sox club that are very, very aggressive on the first pitch and Shohei Otani is around the zone so much especially with his fastball even his get over break a ball first pitch first pitch of the night is a cutter and misses to Andrew Benintendi White Sox leadoff hitter is hit well for average but not any power this year one home run in Seattle about a week and a half ago Drives this one to left center field. Hit pretty well. Moniak goes back for it. He's at the wall, and he makes the catch right in front of the fence as Ben Intendi gave that one a ride. And there's and one away. Speaking of defense, tonight's our East and an East and defense. Hunter Renfro back out in right field, 978 fielding percentage. Five outfield assists, 62 over, 54 in right field. Moniak, we saw that play in center. Taylor Ward in left. Ranjifo, Fletcher, Drury, and Moustakis back at first. Chad Wallach behind the plate calling the pitches, receiving the pitches, I should say, from Shohei Otani. Now, he's not calling them. Yes. Uh, make no mistake, <laughs> Shohei is calling the pitches as Tim Anderson stands in for his first at bat tonight. And there's the first sweeper of the night that lands for a strike. And really, it was just because of the pitch timer. Shohei is particular about what he wants to throw. He'll shake off his catcher sometimes, and there really isn't time for that. So he's just calling the pitches himself. Saves time. 
two sweepers two strikes to Anderson called that a cutter on the video board either way it's 0 and 2. Usually Shohei Otani when he gets to that two strike count he will finish off hitters very effectively with a secondary pitch although we've seen some more fastballs he might try to ride that fastball upstairs. Or the cutter upstairs instead as Anderson backs away from it one ball two strikes on the former all star former batting champion in the American League. See right there the, the target being set by Chad Wallach. He's making sure when he throws the sweep or even the last pitch was supposed to be a cutter it was supposed to be down. He's making sure he's tapping that dirt behind the plate at home. Tani working ahead of Tim Anderson. And fastball is fouled off. One thing about Anderson even still and despite the fact that he has not hit much this year he still doesn't strike out that much. Guy who will make some contact most of the time. Shohei, though, it's a lot of strikeouts. He has the fourth most in the major leagues. Will likely pass Pablo Lopez of the Twins tonight. Anderson, he's usually one of the best fastball hitters in the game. It was 96 and then 98. Now you think you have a shot, especially a spot like that with a 98 mile an hour fastball. If you start that sweeper or even cutter that same plane and get it to go off the outside corner, you might have a shot getting a punch out. You got to be ready to that right side of the infield. And there's the first strikeout of the night. Tim Anderson couldn't hold his swing. It was a splitter. And Shohei has his first punch out. I like seeing that Shohei using that splitter early in the game. And you see how that just tumbles straight down. When he throws that pitch, it's one of the most unhittable pitches in the game. It's his 12th strikeout this season. It's 172. A whiff percentage just under 36% with his splitter. Although usage of a splitter down considerably this year, still pretty devastating. First two White Sox retired and a sweeper to start Luis Robert who <laughs> looks back disgustingly back at Shohei. Now, come on man I like fastballs don't you know. <laughs> There's a splitter again he's got that working. Well if he has that working early in the game watch out if you're a hitter. Ahead of Luis Robert 0 and 2. Bounced that splitter. One ball, two strikes on Luis Robert, who homered for the only White Sox run yesterday on a fastball. He's been the best hitter in baseball against the fastball this year. And Shohei Otani usually limits the damage on his fastball when he's on the mound. See what gives here on a 1 2 pitch to Luis Robert. The sweeper is fouled off. Just a little bit higher than he wanted to throw that sweeper. I'll tell you what, I'm liking what he's doing with his splitter already. He's throwing three of them tonight. Swing and a miss. It was the splitter again. Shohei has found that pitch early. Struck out Tim Anderson and Luis Robert with splitters for a one, two, three, top of the first. Create amazing work with Fiverr. All you need is your team and a talented freelancer who will lend a hand and seamlessly join your team from just about anywhere. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. To get your best night's sleep, you need to sleep in something extraordinary. Woven with a silky softness unlike any other. From organic threads that are slow spun and finished in flame. Made from an ingredient so rare, less than 1% of the world's cotton meets our quality. It's the most extraordinary fabric ever made. 
only from Bowl and Brandt. They said optical shops weren't very inviting. So we, Warby Parker, created ones that were. They said prescription eyewear was too expensive. So we offered more affordable glasses, contacts, and eye exams. They said opticians weren't always friendly. Take a look at our Carl's Cam replay. The Angels scoring four runs in the top of the first off Michael Kopech in Chicago. Included Matt Dice driving one out against Kopech in that first inning against the White Sox. Give you tonight's Theodore Robbins Ford. Angels starting lineup weighted on base average. Kind of a fancy on base percentage. Mickey Moniak has led the way for the Angels, although Shohei has done it over the full season. Brandon Drury hits third tonight. Mike Trout getting a scheduled day off after he scored the winning run on the wild pitch to open up this series last night. I'm sure we'll see Trout if the Angels need him later. Here's Moniak to start the game. Swinging at the first pitch. Don't forget Mickey's hit a few leadoff home runs this year and he'll take his swings against Kopech. And he's not afraid to swing at the first pitch, especially knowing Kopech's going to throw a high percentage of fastballs. He had over a little over 62 percent. Moniak rolls this one over to first. Gavin Sheets feeds Kopech. And the defense behind Kopech for the White Sox today. Tim Anderson at shortstop. Six, a 967 field under percent six ease so far the season and 21 double plays turn. One of the best shortstop when he's on this game and feeling healthy. He's got a strong throwing arm. Jimenez out in right field. You got Roberts in center and Benintendi in left field. Berger at third. Sheets, you saw him make it play with Andrews at second. Shohei Otani takes ball one. Tonight's starting pitcher batting second. It's Otani land here at Angel Stadium. Opec pops the mitt with 95 to make it one ball, one strike. Shohei has hit 375 in the games that he has pitched in. His OPS 1130 in those games. So far 0 for 6 against Kopek though for Shohei. So he's probably due. Probably. Just one fastball in the wrong spot for Kopek and it could be one nothing right here. See what I mean? That is high. That is deep. That is gone. That is number 27 for Shohei Otani. Spectacular indeed. He's just not real. 27th home run, 63 RBI. Shohei Otani all over that pitch. A four seam fastball. <laughs> Saving his energy. He's on the mound today. I still got to wear the Kabuto. I'll give it to Ipe. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> he might be looking for Sandoval. Yeah, he's going to deliver it to Sandoval. <laughs> That's so incredible. Wow. <laughs> One nothing. Right out to Otani land right away. Yep. Just wanted to say hello. That is the 12th home run for Otani in the month of June. It's one off the franchise record for home runs in a single month, which he tied when he had 13 in June two years ago. Brandon Drury looks at a strike. That's a third home run Kopech has allowed to the Angels in the first inning so far this year. He's given up 17 home runs. That's near the top of the major leagues and home runs allowed. As we were saying just seconds before, well, Kopech throws a lot of fastballs. He misses his location by little. And it's likely going to be yep. one nothing. That's how on fire Shohei yep. is right now. You can't miss to him. Nope. Now Brandon Drury off the end of his bat flies one to Robert. It's the fourth home run that Ohtani has hit in a game that he has pitched this year. And this fastball's right down the heart of the plate at 95 miles an hour. Kopech gave a courtesy look initially, and Shohei, pretty good launch angle on that one also. 
110.8 miles per hour exit velocity going 418. Incredible sound. Here's Mike Moustakas swinging through a high fastball. Moustakas had his first hit as an angel yesterday. He was at the plate when Mike Trout scored the winning run in the wild pitch last night in the bottom of the ninth inning. Kopech fires in a strike to make it 0 and 2. Talked about Mustakas getting his first major league home run here at Angel Stadium back when he was with the Royals. A great tweet last night from the Royals PR director at that time, Mike Swanson, because he said Torrey Hunter held the game up to ask the fan who caught it to get the baseball back. Knowing it was Mustakas' first home run, Torrey Hunter wanted to make sure, even as an opponent, that Mustakas got that ball back, so he stopped the game and got the ball from that fan. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's that's Torrey Hunter, by the way. That's the great person that he is, especially the way he played the game of baseball on the field. Mike Trout learned so much from him. Goes the other way and lines a base hit to left. Well, you said it yesterday. Mustakas has really been hunting breaking balls, and he punched that one the yeah, other he way. He stays on breaking balls, whether they're curveballs or sliders, cutters. Very, very effective. That's a great swing going the other way. I mean, that's a pretty good pitch off the plate. You figure you got a chance to get in a chase. He stays through it. Hands are quick and level, and he lines it to left field for a base hit. It's been a bit of a resurgent year offensively for Mustaka. And it's, and it's easy to say, well, Coors Field, he's been playing for the Rockies. His numbers are actually better on the road this year away from Coors Field than they were in Denver. So that's a good sign that Mustakas' offense this season has been for real. And here's Taylor Ward, who would like to see his offense get a little more real. OPS under 700 right now for Ward. One ball, one strike on Ward, getting the start in left field. Hunter Renfro is back in right field. Moniak's in center field with Mike Trout getting this game off. You have to imagine that for Trout, the scheduled off days have certainly taken care of his body through the first half of the year. We'll see how many more of those come with the second half. Yeah, I said to him, that's a great read. Yeah, he goes, you know what? I'm still fast. And I just started well, laughing. He was fast. That stolen yeah. base, how quick he was, and how quick he reacted on a secondary lead to score the winning run last night. He certainly has picked his spots win to run. It was an important stolen base. He got to third. Scored on the wild pitch, turning on the afterburners both times. You know, they've done it. Phil Nevin and the Angels staff, they've kept Trout healthy. This is the halfway point tonight. This is game number 81. And Trout has been healthy. So now you get to the second half. You think about a playoff run. This team is certainly in the mix. And we'll see how many more of those days off come for Trout. But they've done the job. They have taken care of Mike. Really have given everybody an opportunity to get a breather here and there too, whether it's Drury or Renfro. It's been really good as far as finding the right time when Rendon or even when Urshela was playing, finding those right days off. And this team has used its depth. They've added depth even as players have gotten hurt. Now more guys have come in. Bustakas and Eduardo Escobar over the weekend. Bustakas will run here on three and two. And Taylor Ward yanks one toward the left field corner. That is a foul ball. I mean, you're, when you're facing a pitcher, even though he's got a good fastball, you're going to see a fastball a lot. So you've taken away a lot of the guessing out about what you're going to look for. Even on a 3-2 count, just a little bit ahead of that one. On three and two, Moustakas will get another head start. Taylor Ward takes ball four. It's the first walk. And now two men on for Hunter Renfro. Let's take a look at our play sense presented by Frontier. And Mike Trout on the secondary lead. Goes over basically 12 and a half feet. He gets down there and he sees that baseball as soon as it hits the ground. It's at 16 feet. 
So you're talking about cutting down that distance to go. And that baseball is not that far away from Grandall, but he was quick on the reaction to get down there. 28.2 feet per second for Mike Trout to score that winning run last night. Brandon Drury and Mike Trout. Probably so, watching Shohei. Yeah. <laughs> now, the thing about Trouty, he's always trying to help somebody. And that's the thing, and I remember over the years, the guys are in that dugout going, man, boy, Trout, when he has that off there, even if he's dh and he is always talking, always moving around in that dugout trying to help his team win games. That's a big at-bat there by Taylor Ward. Good walk. Eduardo Escobar made the trip back from Miami. He is a United States citizen. And Escobar getting on the plane, arriving here in Southern California about an hour and a half ago. So he is available off the bench. Joe Adele was sent back to Triple A after a brief cameo with the big league team. Congratulations to Eduardo. That's incredible. Yes, congratulations. Ball one to Hunter Renfro. You know, it's obviously it's an important thing on top of it all, but it, those are tough appointments to get. And once you get one, you can't let it go, or it'll be a while before you get another one. So Eduardo Escobar had to go, and he was able to take care of it. Passed his test. A big moment for Eduardo and his family. I'll tell you about Eduardo. He grew up in poverty in Venezuela. It was so much so that when the White Sox signed him, Ozzie Guillen made sure to get Eduardo into a better living situation after he was signed out of Venezuela. Everyone has said the best teammate they've ever played with. Eduardo Escobar. Saw that right away. His first day, he just walks into the dugout, and it's it, it unreal. <laughs> I was like, "How long have you been here, Eddie? I mean, you've been here for like 20 years, or what?" Two just ball. smiling all the time. Two balls and a strike. As Renfro takes strike two, is actually doing the Mets game on Apple on Friday when the trade happened. So we were doing a, a talkback interview with the Francisco Lindor, and I asked Lindor about the trade and he said it was devastating because Eduardo is not only there for you on the field he's there for you off the field he said he's just an incredible teammate. Renfro stays alive and it's still two and two a long inning here brewing for Kopech 28 pitches. This is why his starts last about five innings and that's it. He can get wild coming into the game leading baseball with 42 walks he's susceptible to a stolen base although you're not going to try to steal in this spot. Now three and two and the runners will get a head start. And he's about 83 percent of the time he will throw a fastball on a three two count against a right handed batter. So you got to feel that's going to come to Hunter Renfro now a fastball. Full count pitch with the runners going to Hunter Renfro. He's right on that fastball fouled it back. Kopech threw it straight down the middle. The 30th pitch of this inning for Kopech. He's often then that four to five inning barometer of 100 pitches. He threw 86 in his last start going just four innings. When the Angels saw him in Chicago in late May, he threw 102 pitches in four and a third innings. 30 in the first. Now 31 is thrown by Renfro for strike three. So the Angels get one, and it was Shohei Otani who delivered that one. His 27th home run of the year. Spectacular, the word of the night. When the details take precedence, the rest falls perfectly into place. We strip away everything but the essential. And what we're left with are thoughtful bedrooms for modern living. Thuma. Sure, you'll teach her to drive a car. Then use Greenlight and teach her to save up for her own car. Mowing lawns and getting paid. Navigate the world of earning, saving, and investing together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. Let's talk about sex. As you get a little older, things tend to work a little differently. I felt shame, embarrassment, guilt. Like something had been knocked out from underneath me. What Hims does is says, hey, look, don't worry about it. We got this part covered, 100% online. The whole process was very discreet. It made me feel like I'm a rock star. This product has changed my life. When it kicked in, I said, yeah, I'm back. I remember this feeling. Get started today at 4 Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. <laughs> 
you need a bit more deep sleep. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. Why? Because sleep helps fend off sickness. A good night's sleep boosts your number of infection-fighting antibodies and cells. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. It's like having a sleep lab on your finger. Go to sleep with AuraRing.com. Tani just had. He struck out Tim Anderson. He struck out Luis Robert. And then he obliterated a home run. All in one inning. Remember, he did that against the White Sox last season, beginning part of the year. Struck out a couple of 100 mile an hour fastballs, and then he hit a 115 mile an hour exit velocity, 450 home run. The guy is just unreal. Now, Eloy Jimenez cracks one to the corner in left field. Extra bases for. Jimenez, the first White Sox hit, is a leadoff double here in the second. And now it's time for Hyundai Key for the game today. Going some sticks there with Shohei Otani on the mound. Show me the way. Shohei Otani gives himself an early 1 0 lead now with a runner in scoring position to show me the way to get through and put up that zero and maintain this early lead. Andrew Vaughn the batter he's the DH tonight for the White Sox Vaughn had a base hit yesterday White Sox only had three hits two of them were from Robert the ground ball to second this will move the runner over as Brandon Drury throws out Vaughn when we talk about how creative Shohei Otani is on the mound in the first inning used his splitter a lot earlier than we've seen that one went straight down at 87 miles an hour strike out a guy that doesn't strike out a whole lot Tim Anderson and he gets Robert the same thing what a spot that was now looking get that punch out here against Grandall who hits fastballs very very well in field about halfway in for Grandall he ended up playing a key role in the game last night remember yes money Grandall didn't start he was used as a pinch hitter for Sebi Zavala in the eighth inning. And yeah, he's a much better hitter than Zavala. Still a pretty good hitting catcher is Grandal. But it was a real risk that Pedro Griffal took because in a tight game late, well, Zavala is the much better defensive option. And Grandal's defense certainly played a role in how the game ended. He had a tough time, especially the, the wild pitch that ended up resulting in the game winning run swing and a miss fastball that had some cutting action to it yeah, that's a four seamer a true four seamer with cut action to it one ball two strikes on Grandal so he could use a strikeout here with the man on third Jake Berger on deck soft bouncer foul keeps the count one and two We're back with another fastball in that one Number two strikeouts in the first inning on a splitter. Missed. Uh, Phil Miller was umpiring the plate again. That might have been strike three. <laughs> Roberto Ortiz, the home plate umpire tonight. Pretty close, but that's the right call. Just a little bit off the plate. That's a pretty good take. You see Shohei when he gets to two strikes. More than not, he wipes you out. Trying to do so to Grandal. A foul off the foot of the White Sox catcher keeps it two balls two strikes that sweep a little harder than the one he threw the Jimenez who doubled down the left field line I was at 85 that one was at 88 Randall another guy who makes decent contact doesn't strike out a ton Shohei has 119 strikeouts in his 90 innings this year. Shohei dials up the gas to strike out Grandall. It's his 41st strikeout on his fastball this season. Runs that one upstairs after 
a splitter, and then a sweeper, and then upstairs with the gas, 98. Jake Berger, the batter, he has just three hits in his last 35 at bats. So fouls one off. Berger has been hitting into some tough luck. Batting average on balls and play has been very low lately for Berger, but as you see with the home runs, he has power despite the lower average. Berger also was working on a kind of a Mike Ditka esque mustache, and I don't know why he shaved it. It's a good look for Berger. <laughs> Yeah, he's kind of a beefy guy. Yeah. With the big burly mustache. Well, why get rid of him? Well, he's kind of a baby face burger. Well, he's staying with the fastball against him so far. One ball, two strikes on Burger. Well, memory of two punch outs in the first on splitters against right handed batters. He started him on the outside part of the plate to get the punch outs. You know, he might be Burger, but right now he's facing the king. <laughs> You're good today, Wayne. You're really good today. <laughs> Laid off the high fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Shohei's fastball this year has almost not been hit at all. Opponents have hit 129 entering tonight, and over the last 14 years, that would be the lowest in a single season. Two and two to Berger. Swing and a foul. Berger just got a piece. That was a splitter. This is a little more elevated. So hey, this season with runners in scoring position, a little higher than we've seen in the past, but with two outs, a little bit better than it is in normal circumstance. A chance to get through this inning, no damage. Another 2-2 two -two coming to Berger. Fouled off again. Berger had a long at bat last night. In the sixth inning, facing Reed Detmers, and ended up in a strikeout. It was a 10 pitch at bat or so. Seventy four strikeouts on the season for Berger. That's up there. Shohei trying to add to it. And work out of the second. Off that one up, and now it's a full count on deck. Gavin Sheets, a left-handed batter. Been a pretty good at bat here for Berger. He's really worked hard here against Shohei, and Shohei's thrown some pretty good fastballs against him. Three balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Got him with the sweeper. Back to back strikeout. Shohei works around a leadoff double. Big leaguers from 17 different countries come out to play during MLB Network's International Week. Our national pastime unites nations, cultures, and hearts alike, filled with players who bring dedication and diversity to the diamond. MLB Network celebrates this success with a week filled with the biggest moments, in-depth interviews, and unparalleled insight from TV's best baseball analysts. It's Baseball Without Borders on International Week, all week on MLB Network. MLB Tonight, the ultimate late-night baseball party. See the night's biggest moments, <laughs> the best interviews. We all love DJ Dan. And cutting-edge analysis from TV's best. This one takes the cake. That is awesome. MLB Tonight, late nights on MLB Network. Sunday, on the next episode of MLB's Carded. Join Greg Amsinger for a look at all things cardboard. From vintage to modern, we've got it covered. MLB's Carded, Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network. Listen to live, black ad free audio from every major league club. And Aaron Judge with some thump. Stream video of minor league games. That's a go ahead grand slam. And watch the best baseball highlights and look ins on MLB Big Inning. The all new At Bat is your all in one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. There she goes. Home run, Pete Alonso. 
Subscribe to At Bat within the MLB app today. Shohei Otani didn't sport the Kabuto after hitting his 27th home run of the year. The Kabuto has been such a big part of their story this season. And on this Japanese Heritage Night tonight, the manufacturers of the Kabuto have actually brought an entire suit of armor from Japan to complete the suit. And it's on display for fans to see here at the Big A. It's called the Kachu. It's displayed on the terrace level, Section 213, completing the samurai warrior helmet the entire suit of armor so the manufacturers had such an overwhelming response to Shohei and the team using the Kabuto that they wanted to bring the rest of it to share with their United States audience and the Japanese culture of course we know it usually takes about two to three months to make this because it's handmade but guys they put a rush on it to get it to the team in one month that's incredible it looks unbelievable perfect for tonight Kabuto is in top form, just like yes. Shohei. <laughs> yes. Two balls, two strikes on Luis Renjifo. A lot of fans are using it to put it on the gram. That's what it's all about. That's what you do. You're always looking for a way to get it on the gram. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say quite a few full counts for Kopech, but I just had to laugh at that one. Yeah, it's a full count. Yes. And it's ball four, so two walks already from Kopech. Lead off man on for the Angels here in the second. wonder if Renhifo now thinks about a stolen base. I was just going to say the exact same thing. This is a spot where you think you got to take a shot. Kopech has allowed 15 stolen bases, only two caught stealing. 48 or 41 in his seven in his career in Grandall, you want to take that shot just in case. He's allowed a number of his stolen bases, 59 so far this year, with nine caught stealing. Chad Walla couldn't lay off that pitch in the dirt. A lot of steals against the White Sox, a lot of steals against Kopech. You know, there was always kind of a, a comparison between Kopech and Noah Syndergaard yep. when they were coming up. Syndergaard from Texas. Wearing number 34 with the Mets, the big blonde guy, the long hair. Kopech kept his hair a little shorter, really. Not a lot of difference between the two as they were coming up. Kopech from the same area, at least from Texas, and a guy that is trying to establish himself as a power throwing major league pitcher. He's had some bumps along the way, certainly. Both having Tommy John surgery. Kopech's bounced back better from it than Syndergaard. There goes Renhifo. Throw to second by Grandal. It is in time. Luis is not moving from that base yet. Well, there's Ray Montgomery on the phone. It felt like Anders did a nice job of not giving him much room to the base, even though we have a bigger base now in Major League Baseball. He beats the throw, but he's got it blocked. That foot kept it there. Now, if you go in cleat first, you're not going to be able to put your foot like that in front. But he blocked it. Although he's got that hand in there. I'm surprised they didn't go after and challenge that. Because it came off. And with Andrews's foot right in front of the base, and Renifo was in there. And then as he slid around, he kind of hooked the leg of Andrews and lost track of the bag. Wow, he's really having some control problem. Quite a few pitches. Another look. You see, Renifo got the left hand in. And then as the tag comes in, that hand kind of slides off. Although the, the tag was so quick, you know, Andrews really didn't keep it on him either. Although I guess he goes back to there. it there and then. Yeah, do you Renifo see the separation of the foot back. and hand? Yep. Good decision inside there by the Angels. There's ball four to Wallach. So Kopech continues to miss. That's the third walk of the inning. I don't think Wallach's going to try to steal, though. The Angels 5K and fun run presented by Lexus at the Big A next Saturday, July 1st. Runners receive a shirt, medal, and two ticket vouchers. Register now at angels.com slash 5K. You running on Saturday? Yeah. 
You are? <laughs> running up to the booth to hang out <laughs> with you. Well, here's Fletcher who almost has running out of the booth yesterday. Yeah, and he was just smiling and laughing at me when I said, hey, you know, it was, he almost killed us up here. And he goes, no, I'm not one that close. I said, uh, hello. We still have the ball in the booth. It's kind of oblong shaped after <laughs> it took on the wall behind us. Kind of a loud crash that it made with the wall, but it's in here. Wallach is running. The throw to second by Grandall, and Wallach is out. It was a hit and run, and Fletcher swung and missed. So back to back caught stealings. And the guy that generally makes so much contact, but this pitch was well below the strike zone. See how tough this pitch is to make contact. It's off the plate and on the dirt. And Grandall scoops that in a quick throw. He still has a good throwing arm. Really letting Kopech off the hook because he's been all over the place here in the second. He has walked the first two hitters and both have been thrown out trying to steal. I still want to stop that part of the game here today. Even though successful throwing out a couple base steals, you still had to be aggressive against them. Three balls and a strike on Fletcher. There's ball four. Really, the, even the one strike wasn't close. So Fletcher swung at it because of the hit and run. So Kopex walked three in a row, but two out and a runner on first. How often do you see that? Three walks in an inning, and you still just have the man at first base. Haven't even had a man get to second. Here is Mickey Moniak. I still think, even though he's walked three batters in this inning, if you're Moniak, if you get something close to the zone, you got to be in attack mode here. He might be trying just to get something over. Swing and a miss by Moniak. An awful lot of pitches thrown here early for Kopech. He's fortunate enough that. Randall has made a couple pretty good throws, especially that last one to get Wallach where he had a scoop and throw. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Maybe he'll just walk everybody. Wait. Shohei's on deck. Already 50 pitches thrown by Kopech. Good pitch to drive there and just underneath it. A chance of seeing a slider here now. Full count. Now Fletcher will run on three and two. Michael Kopech has walked four of the last five hitters, including all three in this inning. If he walks Moniak, he'll have to deal with Shohei. And he cranked a home run in the first. Six full counts already in this game for Kopech. Six. This is only the tenth batter that he has faced. Moniak pops it up. Berger in shallow left. And he makes the catch to end the inning. coverage all day every day your way on MLB Network if you love baseball you need to watch baseball show of record MLB tonight we've got a bunch of games kicking off who gets you ready to start the evening 
these guys. With Harold Reynolds, I'm Adnan Burke. Good to have you with us. Join Harold and Adnan for a first look at the night's matchups. Shohei Otani. We're going to talk about this guy forever. First take right from the players. Oh, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. And the first of many breakdowns. Let's put this in perspective. Then, as your game night continues, stay tuned for the ultimate late night baseball party. Oh, with live look ins to the night's biggest moments. MLB Tonight takes you live inside the park. The best <laughs> interviews. I've never asked a player, you need a blanket? It is no, kind of cold out there. The and cutting edge analysis from TV's best former players fresh off the field. Get your hands up. There's nothing quite like MLB Tonight. That is awesome. This one takes the cake. This is going to be a big deal tonight. Exactly. You can't <laughs> top that. Can't top it. MLB Tonight. Every night on MLB Network. Sunday on the next episode of MLB's Carded. Join Greg Amsinger for a look at all things cardboard. From vintage to modern, we've got it covered. MLB's Carded, Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network. Talk about him swinging the bat, but he has been spectacular in the zone this season. This exit velocity of under 87 miles per hour. That's best in baseball. Opponents batting average, second best at 214. Opponents OPS, 616. And 68 strikeouts and a 22.8% whiff percentage, fifth best. That is in zone. Your goal generally as a pitcher is to get chases out of zone, but he's been incredible in zone and getting that kind of numbers and swing and misses. Amazing for Shohei. That's the home run counter in Japanese. See how good I am getting uh, learning Japanese now. That's fantastic. I could tell that was the home run count. Man, you're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> 27 wasn't a giveaway at all. <laughs> Gavin Sheets leads off the third. Otani has struck out four and he's hit a homer tonight. It's one nothing, literally all because of him. And there's ball one to Gavin Sheets, son of a big leaguer, Larry Sheets. He was super strong as that as Gavin is. Couple of big dudes. Gavin might be even a little bigger than his yeah, dad. It was pretty big. Yeah, definitely a little bit bigger. Strong too. Larry Sheets at 31 homers when they had that rabbit ball in 1987. That was his career year. First baseline was Stockus with the underhand flip. Shohei's right there. And there's one away in the third. Good feed there from Stockus. Shohei showing that appreciation to lead and be able to get to that base. How quickly he cuts that angle goes right at the bag. Mike Mustakis, a third baseman by trade. Most of his career has been at third base. So able to move across the diamond and handle first base as well. Here's Elvis Andrews. Who I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is a surprise. Maybe it isn't. But this is a guy with over 2,000 career hits. We saw Freddie Freeman the other night for the Dodgers reach 2,000 career hits. He's had a lot against the Angels and a lot of career at bats. Yep. A ton. On the past week, he played his 2,000th career game. So this is a guy who's been around a long time now. He was really young when he got called up by Texas. He's really had a really good career. Very good career. 2009 was his rookie year. He was the rookie of the year runner up that year. He's made some all star games too. By the way, that pitch before at 96, he was late on. That was another. In zone swing and miss on his fastball. In the air center field hanging up for Mickey Moniak. Two up, two down in the third. I don't think Shelley liked the sound of that baseball for bats, so he got a new baseball right away, yeah. even though it stayed in play. Throw that one away. Yeah. Back to the top of the order now Andrew Benintendi the batter. 
And Intendi in the offseason signing a five year, $75 million deal with the White Sox. The largest contract they have ever given out as a franchise. A cutter from Otani makes it strike one. And Intendi was a first round pick, number seven overall, drafted by Boston in 2015. Got to the big leagues pretty quickly. Behind in the count here, 0 and 2 on a couple of cutters. One decidedly slower than the other. The first cutter was 90. That one was 84. Yeah, the first one felt like more of a cutter. That felt that was more of a slider or a sweeper. There is still that traditional slider that he throws in addition to the sweeping slider. That's why the designations are a little different. Two strikes on Ben Intendi. Still wears red batting gloves. Tani couldn't get him to chase out of the zone on that high fastball. And you can almost, it's really, he's the hardest pitcher to guess what he's going to throw next. I would think after a high fastball like that, we go back to a splitter, but you just never know with Shohei. I went to the cutter. Almost it looked like a splitter at first. Either way, Ben Intendi reached out of the zone to make contact. He was lucky to do so. So far today to win Shohei because he's really working it over the last four starts or so working on his balance over the pitching rubber. He's been taking that pitch timer down about one or two seconds a lot. Two and two Tim Anderson on deck. Pedro Griffol says that. And still kind of battling a hand problem. He needed surgery in the offseason. Just missed there, ball three. Shohei's trying to get that outside corner. He hasn't gotten it a couple of times. And really, it's Ben Intendi that maintains he's healthy enough to play. And the White Sox have kept him in the lineup despite those hand problems. Swing and a miss. Shohei Otani has five strikeouts in three scoreless innings. He's even impressed with himself. I don't blame him. <laughs>Seventh home run of the year, extending his major league lead. As he went over 400 feet against Michael Kopech in the bottom of the first. He gave the Kabuto to Ipe. It's the one that ordered it. As for the other guys who hit a lot of homers too, Matt Olson for the Braves, Alonzo for the Mets, Luis Robert who hit his 22nd last night. The other three, they don't pitch every fifth or sixth day. No, and they don't have. 122 strikeouts on the mound. <laughs> we are all proudly residents of Otani land right now. 
It is truly remarkable. We were having this conversation earlier. I actually had it twice today. That even, you know, and Max made the mention of this, and I was talking to John Lowe, he kind of said the same thing. Even if you cut his stats in half right now, it gave him half the strikeouts and half the home runs, it would still be unbelievable. It would still be one of a kind. I mean, he's the first major league player ever with 200 plus strikeouts and 25 plus home runs in a season. He's done that in 80 games, now 27 home runs. He is on pace to reach 200 strikeouts on the mound and 50 home runs at the plate. Think about how difficult it is, and Shohei needs time out. He thought that pitch was yeah, By the way, four. he wants one of those pitches, those couple splitters. He's had even closer to the zone. That was called, in, I guess it's in the neighborhood 3-0 pitch, but that was off the plate. Surprised umpires still even give those neighborhood 3-0 pitches. It's 3-1 and one on Shohei here. And that's definitely ball four, fifth walk for Kopech. This is Shohei's rankings in the major leagues as far as the things that he leads MLB in all on the left side of the screen and he's in the top five in the things on the right side and that includes hitting statistics and pitching statistics that he is either number one or within the top five in the league in. That's ridiculous. Brandon Drury floats one to the right side. Elvis Andrews catches up to it and makes the play to first to retire Drury as Shohei scampers to second. Well, you like to see the Angels start capitalizing on this wildness by Kopech already in this game. Five walks, a hit, and a home run allowed, but only one run so far into the third inning. Kopech might have a chance to get through the infield, but Andrews, a very good shortstop in his day covering the ground at second base not only makes the play but still under control on his throw that just to be able to get Brandon Drury by that stride. It's a ball in the dirt and Grandal was able to pounce on it quickly enough to keep Shohei from advancing. But think about what it would take for him to get to 50 homers hitting and 200 strikeouts pitching in the same year. He's on pace for it. Yes. There are a lot of pitchers in Major League history that have been really good who never had 200 strikeouts in a season. A lot of hitters who never had 50 homers in a year. Hank Aaron never hit 50 homers in a year. And for him to possibly do both in one year, I, I, it, it makes you scatterbrained to yes. think about it. This opportunity for Moustakas here to get a base hit and bring home Shohei to be able to let him relax in the dugout. At the end of the bat foul. One ball, two strikes on Moustakas. Kopech has walked five, and so far none of them have scored. Only one run coming on Shohei's homer in the first. Stockus chases a ball in the dirt and strikes out. It's only the second strikeout for Kopech, who fanned 10 the last time he faced the Angels. Two outs here in the third. I mean, at this point, Kopech has to feel like he's playing with house money to have walked five and not have allowed any runs to this point on those walks. And that could change with a two out hit. A lot of room on both corners to the outfield for Taylor Ward, especially left field. Easy fly ball for Robert. And Kopech continues to be off the hook. Batting averages are up this year. There's less downtime than ever before. Those are to his windup first pitch. And this ball's hit a High drive. Got the wall. See ya. That ball's out of here. That is long gone. Out of here. Live Black Afri audio from every major league club. Video of minor league games. Plus highlights and look-ins on MLB Big Inning. The all-new At Bat is only $3.99 per month. Subscribe within the MLB app today. 
You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning-fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and every morning, only on MLB Network. for Shohei and he continues to be sparkling he's done so many times this year by that big strikeout on opening day against Ramon Laureano 101 miles an hour broke up the breaking ball <laughs> that was Six incredible break <laughs> that was unbelievable I love that look by Melendez too when he looked at it. what was that and Shohei said that's right almost hit for the cycle on the day where he was the starting pitcher almost did it again <laughs> another start not too long after that the ridiculous opposite field home run that he hit in Texas 116 miles an hour the hardest hit opposite field shot by a left hander in the stat cast era and tonight three scoreless innings five strikeouts he's also homered in this game showtime indeed so far tonight yeah home run and a walk so far for Shohei <laughs> everyone excited we're talking Shohei Otani. By the way, that's his 41st walk of the season for Shohei at the plate. Tim Anderson leads off the fourth. And, you know, as always, on that right side of the infield, you got to be ready for Mustakas and Drury against Tim Anderson. He's really good as far as letting the baseball travel and hit the ball that way. Well, it's so easy to glorify players of the past, guys who feel like walking history books Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig the guys who played in the televised era like Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays it's easy to look to those guys as the giants of this game the all time greats Ty Cobb Cy Young but we've seen all of that in one package with one player and it is just an unbelievable privilege to watch this guy perform on this stage. And really he's been locked in on a, a number of pitchers on the other side who pitched very very well against him too on the mound so his numbers win loss wise could be much much better. And he threw an incredible game last time out against the Dodgers only gave up one run in seven innings with 12 strikeouts but ended up picking up the loss. Swing and a miss. Tim Anderson strikes out for the second time. Six strikeouts for Shohei. And he doesn't strike out a whole lot. I went down as a cutter. And when you start having a cutter go like that, and that's definitely a breaking ball, whether it's a slider or cutter. I think that's more of a slider than a cutter. Getting on top of that baseball and it's got that downward action to it. Cutters usually have more horizontal break than vertical break. I mean, you were there. You were you were teammates with George Brett. You were side by side with Bo Jackson. You faced Ken Griffey Jr. I mean, you've seen some of the greats up close on the field. Nothing like this. I think it's okay to say that. This is one of the greatest of all time and we're seeing one of the greatest stories 
in the history of this sport that is filled with them on a rather nightly basis. I mean, baseball you see Shohei Otani is driven by history and, and numbers, and numbers say this is historical as far as a player doing both, like Shohei. Three balls, no strikes on Robert, who struck out his first time. Good fastball hitter, so see if Shohei goes to a 3 0 fastball. Jimenez has the only White Sox hit tonight. He's on deck. There is a fastball, and Robert sends it toward left, but Taylor Ward is there. Robert kind of got off the end of the bat a bit, and he lines out. There's two up, two down. And he felt like he got that ball, Robert, the way he reacted. I mean, this is a pitch right down the heart of the plate. Towards the end of the barrel, though. And he was kind of shocked it didn't go further. And two up, two down. Here's Jimenez, the only White Sox batter to reach base, even. Dropped the curveball, 69 mile an hour curveball. That has a pretty good vertical drop to it. <laughs> the creative one. And then has doubled in the second, made it to third. And was stranded there after a ground out and a couple of strikeouts. Shohei. He usually struggles just a little bit. I mean, it's, everyone else is a pretty good second time through, but 105 first time through, 267 the second time. Then he locks it back in the third time. Well to right, but Renfro right there, and that ends the inning. Shohei Otani has set down nine in a row, four scoreless innings for the Unicorn. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. They said optical shops weren't very inviting. So we, Warby Parker, created ones that were. They said prescription eyewear was too expensive. So we offered more affordable glasses, contacts, and eye exams. They said opticians weren't always friendly. So we hired only the friendliest and the most knowledgeable. And finally, they said the whole experience was just kind of unpleasant. So we set out to change that too. Visit a Warby Parker store and see for yourself. With everything you have on your plate, earning your degree online seems impossible. But at Grand Canyon University, we specialize in helping you fit a master's degree in education into your busy day. Your graduation team, led by your own GCU counselor, provides you with the personal support you need to succeed. Achieve your goals with a plan and team behind you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. These fine young men and women are from the USC sports journalism class. That's our friend Sophie Wimmer in the middle. Right on. There we go. The Trojans. They're headed into the Big Ten pretty soon. <laughs> yes. That's when you think of the Big Ten, USC, and UCLA. Midwest, baby. Hunter Renfro leading off the bottom of the fourth. Sixty five pitches thrown for Kopech into the fourth inning here. Renfro trying to just golf one down the first baseline. Well, we'll see the White Sox bullpen. Problem is that's been a pretty good bullpen. A lot of hard throwers down there. Numbers against Kopech all his pitches are pretty low. It's really been the walk and an occasional home run given up. The reason why is ERA is just a little bit over four. He's given up 17 home runs tonight. He's gotten away with five walks. I mean, a lot of those pitches aren't really close either. I mean, no. A number of full counts behind the count again here, 2 1. He had six walks against the Mariners June 16th and the Astros May 12th. 
to Renfro with a fly ball to shallow right center. Elvis Andrews goes out and makes the catch. And one out, Luis Renifo will bat after we drive around with Hyundai. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Renifo walked his first time. There's a strike on the inside corner from Kopech, 96 miles an hour, hard throwing Texan. Kopech actually was high school rivals with Patrick Mahomes. Quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. They often pitched against each other growing up. In fact, Mahomes threw a no-hitter in a game against Kopech's high school, Mount Pleasant. Renifo hooks one to the right field corner. That's extra bases. We'll see how many as Jimenez goes to get it. Renifo is headed for third. Jimenez finally gets it in. It's a stand-up triple for Luis Renifo. First triple of the season. Giving him now 10 extra base hits. Slider. Lower, just below the strike zone. Jumps on it. Hooks it down the line. And Hefo thinking triple. He sees that down there in the corner. Just picks up. Bill Hasselman, but that's a commitment you're going to make all the way. Standing up triple. Now the White Sox bring their infield in for Chad Wallet. There's ball one from Kopech. Chad Wallet, especially early in the season, so good as far as getting that baseball in the air and getting the job done. Getting it deep enough to get it, at the very least a sack fly, if not more. Wallach trying to bring home a run with a sacrifice fly. As a team, the Angels have hit 28 sacrifice flies this year. Two balls, one strike on Wallach. That is actually the most sacrifice flies by any team in the American League, 28. It's a good situational hitting, and you need that right now. Only one National League team has more. It's the Dodgers. So this is where sacrifice flies live here in yes. Southern California. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two on Wallach. Kopech's only had two strikeouts tonight. Wallach had a high fastball there and fouled it back. Usually when you see a swing like that, a pitcher is going to go back to a breaking ball now. The 26% slider usage this season. Kopech hasn't had much feel for his breaking ball tonight. Grandall with a good job to stop that. Grandall's been much better tonight than he was coming in as a reserve yesterday. He's caught a couple of men trying to steal tonight, including Wallach and Renhifo back to back in the second. Now Wallach trying to knock in Renhifo after a one out triple. Check swing. Wallach knew that was ball four, was trying to hold up, and the ball hit the bat. That's one of those tough ones, too. It's running in at you, trying to make sure you get something out over the plate to hit in the air and ran in on him. Number nine batter Fletcher on deck. Falls off another. So the pitch count continues to rise for Kopech. He's thrown 79 pitches. 
He's only recorded one out into the fourth inning. We're definitely going to see a good chunk of the White Sox bullpen tonight. As the Angels try to add to their lead here in the fourth. There's ball four. It's the sixth walk from Kopech, matching a season high. And now David Fletcher, the right type of guy you want up in a situation that calls for contact. And you never know what with Fletcher because he handles the bat so well that you might see I think that's why you're seeing that talk now with Grandall with his infielder that safety squeeze push that bunt to the first baseline it's possible with Fletch Fletcher has always been a pretty good fastball hitter although he struggled with fastballs last year but for the most part he makes a lot of contact with velocity Went too far on that check swing. Fletcher had a good game in Colorado on Saturday. Who didn't? Yes. And he was really good with runners in scoring position, which he has been throughout his whole career. 559 this season. No balls, two strikes on Fletcher. High contact, high average. It's always been the deal with Fletcher. Moniac on deck. Angels trying to at least get one more here in the fourth. And Fletcher yanks one foul. The slider on the inner half of the plate just pulled a foul. Fletch so good on elevated pitches. And then it's playing pretty shallow and right towards the line. Even Fletch won't swing at that one. <laughs> this is a little too high for Fletch. Well, if it's around the zone, he'll definitely take a hack at it. Ground ball right side. Andrews with a diving stop. His throw to first is in, not in time. Fletcher saved. Yeah, don't look at that one. <laughs> Renifo scores. Fletcher will get an RBI no matter what. It's 2 nothing. It looked like Chad Whitson was about to pump his fist for the out and then change his mind. Let's see right there. Oh, no, oh, that's close. I think if he rules him out, he might as well check it, though, for sure. There's a better angle right here. Chicago is challenging the safe call at first base. I think he might have gotten him. Just barely. Now he looked out in real time, and it looked like Chad Whitson was going to call him out, but then decided to say he was safe. Maybe he got wrapped up in the crowd. But that's still a really good at bat by David Fletcher, making that contact. At the very least, got the run home. Yeah, that's what he needed to do: was put the ball in the spot where the run would score. And Andrews has made a couple really good plays at second base. Look at the umpire. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, here it's is the base is the baseball controlled. It looks like it is controlled in the glove before just before the cleats hit the bag there for Fletcher. Yeah, but what if the cleat? Let's, what if one cleat touched the base? <laughs> right now, what are they looking at in Midtown Manhattan? We never really know. Can we see Chad Whitson again. I want to see that one more time. Uh, it's pretty quick. I think it's overturned. After review, the call in the field is overturned. The runner is out. Chicago will retain their challenge. Yeah, I think that was the right call. But this is a nice job by David Fletcher. He'll get some high fives going in that dugout, getting the job done, getting that run home. That close to being a base hit, but Andrews, two really good plays at second base today already for the White Sox. Well, two outs, runner on second, Moniak at the plate. For David Fletcher, it's his seventh run batted in. Looks like there is some movement down their bullpen now for the White Sox. Tuki Tucson warming up for the White Sox. Ball one strike on Moniak. Oh, 
Duniak, 389 with runners in scoring position. One ball, two strikes to Santa. A brief stay with the Angels last year. Press the fastball, great changeup, too. He could be a little wild himself. Now, Kopech has been very wild tonight. He's walked six. He has not at any point looked like he has had any command with his breaking pitches. This will be his 90th pitch of the night, and he is not out of the fourth inning. This is typical for Kopech. This is why it's so befuddling for the White Sox to have a guy with a lot of talent who just can't get over the hump in terms of being consistent with his control, because when he is consistent, when he is throwing strikes, he dominates. I mean, his batting average against him is here, 214. It's that impressive as stuff, and the control, though. Moniak swings through a slider, maybe the best one Kopech's thrown all night. It's 2 nothing Angels after four. Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. <coughs> you need a bit more deep sleep. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. Why? Because sleep helps fend off sickness. A good night's sleep boosts your number of infection-fighting antibodies and cells. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. It's like having a sleep lab on your finger. Go to sleep with AuraRing.com. Sports fans built a streaming service. Uh, what's going on? I think we found a way to stop fans from destroying their TVs when their teams lose. How's it work? Hey, Charlie. Philly lost. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to put you on hold for just one second. Okay. No! No! Ah! 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 Yeah, we need a little bit of water splashing around this one. The Bob Ross Channel. It's freaking genius. It's even a little over here. Live TV and sports and more, but mostly sports. That's Boobo! Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. Four innings, he's got it all working, using all his pitches. Six strikeouts, the splitter. First couple strikeouts of the game with a splitter, then he goes fastball upstairs, fastball away. His balance is great, his splitter's been good, and then that sweeper right there. If you look at our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Six strikeouts, two splitter, two cutter, one sweeper, one four seam, three of them. In the zone or touching the zone, and the three chases out of the zone. That's how impressive Shohei has been so far through four. And he's been outstanding, plus he has a home run on Japanese Heritage Night here at Angel Stadium. He's always a great Asian presence on the days that Shohei pitches, really every day here at Angel Stadium. So many fans that are paying such close attention to what this man does on a regular basis. Really gets to another level the homemade Kabuto's here at Angel Stadium we've seen all season. And on the days he pitches it's more enhanced. It really is Shohei's show on those days. Splitter just a little bit quick on his delivery. He knows he did did that wrong as far as the front shoulder. See how quickly he can make the adjustment here. Well, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and a strike on Andrew Vaughn.
Long jam. Shohei's calling for it himself. He does it all. <laughs> I could, okay, I could definitely say with Shoei on the mound, pitchers are the best athletes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm comfortable with that one. He's calling it right away. And sometimes you can tell, but we talk about the high sky here, that twilight here. Shohei, the best angle, makes the play. Battle back from a 2-0 count to get a pop-up to himself. One out in the batter, Grandal. Struck him out on a high fastball last time. Two balls, no strikes on Grandal. So back to back batters for Shoei, 2 0. Three and zero now on Grandal. It's been the second time through the order where Shohei's had his most trouble this year. First time and the third times through, he has really owned opposing lineups. Sometimes that second time through has given him trouble. And there's a strike to Grandal. I was in the neighborhood one again. <laughs> Isn't that a TV show, The Neighborhood? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah. With Cedric the Entertainer. He's not Mr. Rogers, but he is in the neighborhood. <laughs> and so is Grandall. He has the second hit tonight for the White Sox. Hunter Renfro cuts that off, keeps Grandall at first. One out single. It breaks a string of 10 in a row retired by Shohei. He had to throw that cutter in his own. That's what he'll do a lot when he tries to get back in the, in a count with his cutter. So he will give up a hit and occasionally on this cutter. And then 316. Versus his cutter with six strikeouts coming into the game. Here's Berger who struck out his first time. And he's been throwing his cutter a lot more. When you go back to over his last three, the percentage going up 14%. And he will throw that a little bit more when he's behind in the count, but although he has thrown a lot more lately ahead of the count. There's a fastball to make it 0-2 on Berger. You know, Shohei early in the season was so infatuated with his sweepers, throwing it a lot, throwing it a lot. Now he's really developed a mix of his pitches again. And it's made him that much better over his last few starts. And the sweeper he allowed some home runs on. Really hadn't given up many hits on it overall, though. He was throwing it predominantly. It's kind of changed here of late. And fastball is blooped to right. Renfro with a good jump coming in. Makes the running catch. Throw to first to Mustakas. It's a double play. Grandal watched it happen. He gets doubled off to end the top of the fifth. Another outfield assist to Hunter Renfro. Gets it at baseball and knows he has some time. Double play. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. Jeremy Pena, the world champion shortstop with Movie Star Presencia. Every Dominican wants to grow up and play baseball, bro. When I was 13, I was like, the plan is to get to the big leagues. I love seeing young Dominicans win, bro, because I'm an old Dominican. You know that Dominicans que juega, todo el mundo juega pelota. Pelota, claro. I was just looking forward to playing again, man. This is going to be a fun year. Salud. A la vida más linda. Salud, hermano. MLB Tonight, the ultimate late-night baseball party. Oh, man. With live look-ins to the night's biggest moments. How hot was that? That's money. What? 
the best interviews. I've never asked a player, do you need a blanket? It is no, kind of cold out the there. Polar bear. And cutting edge analysis from TV's best former players fresh off the field. Get your hands up. There's nothing quite like MLB Tonight. This is going to be a big deal tonight. This one takes the cake. That is awesome. MLB Tonight, late nights on MLB Network. The next generation of baseball has arrived. And I am here for it. Keep an eye on the new faces of baseball on Off Base, the modern baseball show for the modern baseball fan. It's all about things you haven't seen before. Only on MLB Network. Franchise record for home runs just in June belongs to Shohei, Albert Pujols, and Tim Salmon. That is also the record for the most home runs in any month in franchise history. Two others got to 13 Mike Trout in July of 2019 and Mo Vaughn in May of 2000. Shohei can tie that franchise record. With his next swing, he's at 12 home runs in the month of June. He also has 25 RBIs this month. That's only five away from the June Angels record set by Vlad Sr. In 2004, Vladimir Guerrero had a 30 RBI month of June. He's never homered twice in the game he's pitched, but that was a pretty good pitch right there for Shohei. Taking that timeout. Another record he has is the most home runs in a single month while also making multiple starts on the mound in that month hitting those 13 two years ago in June plus the 12 this June so he can tie that record which he said wow that's a pretty good pitch that's showing we don't want to see him hit <laughs> <laughs> you know it's supposed to be on the outside corner but that's the inside corner and as a home plate umpire you got a great view of that and Benetti's gonna have to hold Beckham from jumping at the umpire here in the next booth three balls two strikes on Shohei that was an angry 98 from Kopech because he thought he made a perfect pitch against the most dangerous hitter in the game and now he'll have to make another on three and two to Shohei Otani and a hard hit ground ball gets through that was a rocket 110 <laughs> miles per hour exit velocity. Wow. Shohei's been on base three times. That's a leadoff single here in the fifth. I mean, this is a pretty this is a fastball down, and he just stayed on it. His balance has been outstanding both on the mound and at the plate. Well, he had a hustle to get be able to cut that one off before it got all the way to the wall. Tonight, Shohei also set a record for the most home runs. By a starting pitcher in the first inning of a game. <laughs> he hit his third home run in his career in the first inning of a game that he was the starting pitcher in. There's actually one other pitcher who hit two. It was Carlos Zambrano, homered twice with the Cubs. Uh, he could hit. He could. He it was a switch hitter, too. And he homered twice in the first innings of games that he pitched in. And Shohei's now done it three times, twice against the White Sox, including tonight. One ball, one strike on Brandon Drury, who's 0 for 2. Look at another base runner here by the Angels. That might be it for Kopech. It's bullpen going again. Brandon Drury's got a lot of room that right side. Two balls and a strike on Drury. One hundred pitches now for Kopech. Drury has raised his OPS exactly seventy points each month so far. He's at seven forty three in April, eight thirteen in May, and eight eighty three in June. So look out in July. Yeah. To keep that trend going, he's going to have to put it up another seventy. He can do it the way he's swinging it. See what he does here on three and one. 
Takes ball four. That's the seventh walk for Kopech. That's got to be it, I would think. And here comes Pedro Griffal as the White Sox will have to go to their bullpen. A bit early tonight, Kopech only records a dozen outs. He walks seven. And now Tuki Toussaint will pitch for the White Sox as the Angels threaten to add to their lead. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo, helping players play harder on MLB Network. Sunday, on the next episode of MLB's Carded, join Greg Amsinger for a look at all things cardboard. From vintage to modern, we've got it covered. MLB's Carded, Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network. If you love baseball, you need to watch baseball show of record. MLB Tonight. We've got a bunch of games kicking off. Who gets you ready to start the evening? These guys. With Harold Reynolds, I'm Adnan Burke. Good to have you with us. Join Harold and Adnan for a first look at the night's matchups. Shohei Otani. We're going to talk about this guy forever. First take from the players. Oh, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. And the first of many breakdowns. Let's put this in perspective. Then as your game night continues, stay tuned for the ultimate late night baseball party with live look-ins to the night's biggest moments. MLB Tonight takes you live inside the park. The best interviews. <laughs> I've never asked a player, do you need a blanket? It is no, kind of cold out there. The and cutting-edge analysis from TV's best former players fresh off the field. Get your hands up. There's nothing quite like MLB Tonight. That is awesome. This one takes the cake. This is going to be a big deal tonight. Exactly. You can't <laughs> top that. Can't top MLB Tonight. Every night on MLB Matty, what is your all-time favorite sports movie? It's a good question. Uh, probably growing up, it had to be uh, Friday Night Lights. I, lo I love Mike Winchell. <laughs> that was a good one, and the TV show was pretty good, too. Uh, Paul Durham is my all-time favorite. It has been for, for a couple of years now. Well, there is something yes. romantic about baseball. Yes. After all. Yeah. Well, what, what is your all-time favorite? It's not just baseball or any sports movie in general. I like Major League. I like Bob Huker's performance in Major League especially. Yeah, one that. hit. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. There's some good <laughs> stuff in that one. You know that X line. Leave me alone. Yes. <laughs> here's, here's Tuki Toussaint. Former Angel. Former first round pick too, Tuki Toussaint. Drafted by the Diamondbacks, who we'll see this weekend. Arizona leading the National League West. Stockis bounces one to first. Sheets throws to second for one. Anderson to Toussaint for the double play. It's pretty good turn there by. Having sheets to get right there and make a quick throw and have a chance, especially with that throwing arm of Tim, Tim Anderson, leads Toussaint to be able to get to the bag. Big double play for the White Sox there. Never easy to have a 3 6 1. That's one thing the Angels haven't done tonight. They haven't kicked the door down in this one. They've had so many chances, seven walks. None of those walks have come back to score. Michael Kopech is all over the place. Seven walks, three strikeouts. But to this point, just two runs. It would take a two-out hit to make it three, and it's 0-2 already on Taylor Ward. Curveball. Toussaint. Fastball with a lot of movement. Two balls, two strikes on Taylor Ward. Toussaint born in Florida, but he moved to Haiti when he was a baby. His dad was a presidential candidate in Haiti. It's a good reason to go back. Toussaint is Haitian and Kenyan. 
Three balls, two strikes on Taylor Ward. And another walk from a White Sox pitcher. That is the eighth walk the Angels have drawn tonight. The Angels get on base. They have the fifth highest on base percentage in the major leagues this year. Entering tonight's play, the Angels getting on base at a 333 clip. The White Sox just 291. A more than 40 point on base difference between the two. And that's only increased tonight with all the walks from White Sox pitching. But still, it's just a two run lead. And here's Hunter Renfro. And ball one. It's a big moment now for the Angels. You need those add on runs, opportunities, a lot of base runners. Tell you what, Hunter Renfro would get love to get that pitch back there, that get over curveball in the inner half of the plate. He could do some damage to that one. Renfro did a lot of damage early in the year. Pops this one up, and it's going to reach the seats out of play. And Tuki Toussaint entered this game with runners on first and second, nobody out. Immediately got a double play ball. And he walked Taylor Ward. So eight walks. Still, the Angels' runs haven't come from any of them. A homer, a triple, and a ground out to make up the two runs. And the eight walks have had nothing to do with it. There's a ball in the dirt from Toussaint to make it two and two on Renfro. That ball's been pretty solid tonight behind the plate. He threw out a couple base throws. He's blocked some pitches in the dirt, too. So, solid effort defensively by Grandall. Swing and a miss. Another wasted chance for the Angels, though they still have the lead. MLB Big Inning brings you the biggest plays of the night, live as they happen. Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. It's nonstop action on MLB Big Inning, every night on MLB.tv. Got something to say about the game? I want to hear that. Don't just talk about it. Get caught up so we can talk about it on the show. Intentional talk about it. I think this is when opportunity arises. Join the conversation with Intentional Talk on MLB Network. We're watching. We're watching. If you love baseball, you need to watch baseball show of record, MLB Tonight. We've got a bunch of games kicking off. Who gets you ready to start the evening? These guys. With Harold Reynolds, I'm Adnan Burke. Good to have you with us. Join Harold and Adnan for a first look at the night's matchups. Shohei Otani. We're going to talk about this guy forever. First take right from the players. Oh, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. And the first of many breakdowns. Let's put this in perspective. Then, as your game night continues, stay tuned for the ultimate late night baseball party. Oh, with live look ins to the night's biggest moments. MLB Tonight takes you live inside the park. The best <laughs> interviews. I've never asked a player. You need a blanket. It is no, kind of cold out the there. Bear. And cutting edge analysis from TV's best former players fresh off the field. Get your hands up. There's nothing quite like MLB Tonight. That is awesome. This one takes the cake. This is going to be a big deal tonight. Exactly. You can't <laughs> top that. Can't top it. MLB Tonight. Every night. On Sports brought to you by Hyundai. It's your journey on every mile in a brand new Hyundai. By OC Healthcare Agency. Build your healthiest self at angels.oc navigator. Org and by your local Southern California Cadillac dealers. The Angels have a 2-0 lead behind Shohei Otani tonight. Before the top of the sixth begins, we send it down to Erica Weston. Guys, you've been talking for weeks about solving the Otani puzzle. I have not solved the unicorn on the mound, but perhaps I have solved the puzzle. I have the last piece here. I've been busy during uh, tonight's game. There it is. It's wow. officially completed. Wow. So. If my questions are terrible after the game, this is the reason why. 
Um, so that was fun. I had some friends help me down here. It's impressive. And, yeah, I don't know if it's impressive. It took me three innings to get there. I wouldn't call that impressive, but it was fun. <laughs> it was, um, I guess, a brain exercise. So we'll go with that. And my favorite sports movie, uh, nobody asked, is Major League as well. Oh, Major League 2. Wow. No, she said Major League, not Major League 2. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Gavin Sheets leads off the six. Major League Two is the one where the White Sox were the villain, though. Jack Parkman. By the way, that was a pretty good curveball, lower part of the strike zone. Not call the strike on that one. <laughs> Nasty pitch there on a cutter, and it's a ball and a strike on Sheets. Then Andrews and Benintendi do up. Here in the top of the sixth inning, Shohei's at 72 pitches. Sheets busted his bat. And that's what a cutter is designed to do, to get it on the handle of a bat. That was a perfect one from Shohei. Why did Erica finish the puzzle with a corner piece? Don't you, did you start with the corners and kind of build around the edges? <laughs> You're not asking me how to do a puzzle, are you? No. <laughs> Perfect cutter from Shohei. Two balls, two strikes on Sheets. Otani has six strikeouts, just two in the last three innings. He had four in the first two. There's a strikeout for Otani, his seventh tonight. Gavin Sheets strikes out to begin the sixth. That was a nasty splitter. That's a third strikeout with his splitter. This went straight down. You can see that grip. Starts at the knees, ends up just above the dirt. Great balance, drives toward the plate. Really liking that cutter here tonight. Ball one to Elvis Andrews. Line to center field his first time. Two balls, no strikes now. After Andrews, it's back to the top of the order in the third time through. That's when Shohei has turned it up a notch. Opponents batting just a buck 69 third time through the order against him this year. Three balls and no strikes. Shohei hasn't walked anybody tonight. The White Sox have walked eight. The Angels have only managed two runs. Nothing to do with any of those walks. There's ball four to Andrews. So Andrews the first the guy walk that, tonight. He doesn't walk a whole lot either. It was a time when Elvis Andrews would steal a lot against the Angels. He was really successful for a long period of time, not running as much this season, but usually pretty successful. Andrews in his career has 341 stolen bases. He had as many as 42 in a season back in 2013 with the Rangers. He is the active leader. In stolen bases. No one active has more career steals than that man right there. Still 119th on the all time stolen base list. Swing and a miss by Ben and It's a good run on his four seam fastball. And Intendi struck out his last time, one of the seven strikeouts for Shohei tonight. Slap 
to left. Taylor Ward backs off, and it's a base hit for Benintendi. And the White Sox starting to cook something up here in the sixth inning. First and second, one out. And that fastball upstairs, he just went with the pitch. That's where the target was set. He just stayed on it. Then we missed a couple fastballs in that sequence. They were a little bit lower in the strike zone, but that was upstairs, and it went with it. Brings up Anderson, then Robert. The tougher spots now in the lineup for the Angels, or against the Angels here for the White Sox. Anderson has struck out both times he's hit. Anderson has good speed, but he hits a lot of ground balls, and therefore he hits into a lot of double plays. He's hit into seven this year. It's just a byproduct, really, of all the ground balls that he hits. Tani drops in the cutter. It's no balls, two strikes on Anderson. Shohei with seven strikeouts tonight. He passed Pablo Lopez. Kevin Gosman struck out 12 tonight. And the Blue Jays lost. They were beaten by the Giants. Houston also lost tonight. That's in there. Strike three called. Anderson strikes out for the third time. Shohei's fan eighth. And that backup. Cutter gets the inside corner. Nice job of presenting that well, too, by Chad Wallach. He just kept that glove there. Didn't move it a whole lot. If you move it a lot, it's going to be a tough to get that call. Just enough to frame it. Here's Robert 0 for 2. Hit the ball sharply as the last time, but lined out to left. The most dangerous hitter in this White Sox lineup is Robert. He takes ball one from Otani. One out walk, then a base hit. And Shohei has struck out a couple of batters around that. As he pitches with some traffic for really one of the few times tonight. Robert punches that one, but well foul. It's another one of those either cutter or sweeper on the inside part of the plate. It's a dangerous pitch, although a sweeper like that with the velocity on the pitch, it's going to be 85. It's tough keep that one fair but you don't want to stay inside there too often against Robert so strong you can get Robert to chase fastball right on the dot of the outside corner 99 that's the hardest fastball he has thrown tonight and we've seen him dial it up big in moments like this men in scoring position getting later in a game Shohei finds the big fastball one and two coming to Luis Robert. And he reaches out, lofts one toward the left field corner. It is deep down the line. It is foul. Cutter again. And Robert well out in front of it. Not too often you see a matchup like this. The man who leads the league in homers against the man who is second in the league in homers. But everything is rare when it's Shohei. Everything is unique. Looking for this punch out to finish off the inning here now for Shohei. On one and two, Robert swings and misses strike three. It's the third strikeout of the inning. The spectacular Shohei has fanned nine in six shutout innings to maintain a 2 nothing lead on the White Sox. Listen to live black ad free audio from every major league club. And Aaron Judge with some thump. Stream video of minor league games. That's a go ahead grand slam. And watch the best baseball highlights and look ins on MLB Big Inning. The all new At Bat is your all in one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. There she goes. Home run, Pete Alonso. Subscribe to At Bat within the MLB app today. Sunday on the next episode of MLB's Carded. Join Greg Amsinger for a look at all things cardboard. From vintage to modern, we've got it covered. MLB's Carded, Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Things are heating up. Packing all today's biggest plays into one lightning-fast hour. Oh, my goodness! What a play! Every 
game. Goal! Every night. Swing and a miss. Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today. Preview tomorrow. The quickest way to catch up on all the action? We've got you covered. On Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings. Only on MLB Network. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. The score that the White Sox have. The Angels have only managed two runs despite being walked eight times in this game. Luis Renipo. Creating one of the runs with a triple to the right field corners last time. He scored on a ground down. Tuki Toussaint replaced Michael Kopech in the fifth inning. He's still out there for the sixth. Well, you still feel you got to add on because right away that last half inning, the White Sox had an opportunity with two runners on. Representing the tying run to go ahead run at the plate. In a game where you feel you can have a significant lead, but they've made some pitches to get through. Shohei had 91 pitches in six innings. Figure he's going to get one more, and that'll be that. So the Angels will need two innings out of their bullpen. Certainly, Estevez will be available today. He only threw five pitches in the ninth inning yesterday. Bounce to Elvis Andrews at second base. Almost walked it all the way to first to throw out Ren Hifo. Away as Wallach will be the batter. Surf's up at the Big A this Saturday, July 1st. The first 25,000 fans will receive a Trout Otani City Connect bobblehead courtesy of Yakult Probiotic Drink. Before the Halos take on the Diamondbacks at 7 p.m. Visit angels.com slash promotions. Wallach has walked twice. Angels have walked eight times. Go no back to the second inning. Two runners, including Wallach, were thrown out trying to steal. And he fell on a straight steal. Wallach, after David Fletcher swung and missed on a ball in the dirt, and now Wallach swings and misses for a strikeout. Yeah, that was a hit and run, a real tough one for David Fletcher to make contact with. Fletcher with that RBI in the fourth inning. The other Angels run came from a Shohei a home run in the first. Son generally keeps the, his pitches downstairs, so it's difficult to be able to drive the ball in the air. You're going to more likely have to hit it on the ground or on the line against him, unless it's a mistake up. It's a fly ball to left. Easy for Ben and Toussaint works a one, two, three inning. of MLB's Carded. Join Greg Amsinger for a look at all things cardboard. From vintage to modern, we've got it covered. MLB's Carded, Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network.
Nissan. Explore great deals at the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event. Shop NissanUSA.com. And by Jack in the Box, introducing Snoop's Munchie Meal. Available for a limited time only at Jack in the Box. Japanese Heritage Night here at Angel Stadium. Shohei Otani Appreciation Night developing once again. Nine strikeouts and six scoreless innings. He's also homered for one of the two Angels runs. And this will likely be his last inning on the mound as he begins the seventh against Eloy Jimenez. So hard up the middle and a base hit. Jimenez has his second tonight. And the White Sox have their leadoff man on here in the seventh inning. The baseball was hit 110 miles per hour right back up the middle. Whew. Wow. Here's Andrew Vaughn fouled out to Otani his last time. Dangerous pitch upstairs there. That's a guy with some pretty good power. 32 extra base hits. And the guy, if you get a ball on the ground in an infield, you can get a double play with. Joey's had 10 ground ball double plays turned behind him this year. This one fouled back just over our booth, and it's quickly 0 and 2 on Vaughn. It was. The number three overall pick in 2019. The two men drafted ahead of him were Adley Rutschman and Bobby Witt Jr. See Jacob Webb moving around now. Webb worked an inning yesterday. One ball, two strikes on Vaughn. Season high for pitches by Otani came in his second start this year. He threw 111 against the Mariners April 5th. Up to 101 in his last start, striking out a dozen. On fouls, actually, did he miss that? He did. That's strike three, and the tenth strikeout for Otani comes on a wild pitch. The batter automatically out with a man on first, but Jimenez goes to second as Shohei reaches his tenth strikeout tonight. That's another elevated pitch. That's a sweeper way above the strike zone. Now I think what had happened on that one too was Chad Wallach was anticipating that that pitch going down and it just stayed flat upstairs and a lot of pitches upstairs. That's what you get a little bit concerned about from Shohei. Elevation on a lot of his pitches even that one again. You can see Grandall upset with himself that he could only foul that one off. Tani nearing 100 pitches now. He has struck out 10, another 10 strikeout game for Shohei. Wave and a miss by Grandall. Otani now with 16 double digit strikeout games since the start of last year. That's the most in the majors. He has six this year. Almost got in the way after that one. Jake Berger follows Grandall as Shohei gets near the end of his night. Jacob Webb begins to throw in the Angels' bullpen. It's a close game, largely because the Angels have squandered a lot of opportunities. Eight walks have not come around to score. One and two coming to Yasmani Grandal. Yes, missed. Trying to go back to work with that sweeper. Could be a profitable night for the Angels in terms of the standings. The Blue Jays lost. The Astros lost. The Yankees are losing. The Angels trying to lock one down against the White Sox. And it's a full count on Grandal. And he's starting to look like he's having a tougher feel for his pitches right now. So much trust for Shohei. Phil Nevin will let him go as long as he thinks he can. 
It's three and two. And it's off the outside corner ball four. The second walk issued. Gives the White Sox runners on first and second as Matt Wise calls the bullpen. Now Matt Wise will head to the mound. Ipe will follow him out there. And we'll do that. And here's Snoop. Yo, Jack, that a baked brownie in my munchie meal? You know it, Snoop. Say less. Snoop and Jack in the box. Yes. What, what else a, do you need? That's a great combo. Randall has come out for a pinch runner as the White Sox send Clint Frazier to first base. Sebi Zavala will catch the rest of the night. Kind of the opposite of last night, where now the White Sox, instead of weakening their defense late in the game, they'll weaken their offense in a game where they at the moment are behind, but they do get a little faster at first base now with Frazier running. Does it happen too often where Shohei's an 0-2 count and end up walking the batter? Shohei's motioning to the training staff, and now Mike Frostad comes out with Phil Nevin. Shohei might be coming out of this game as Ipe fills Phil Nevin in. And immediately, Phil Nevin points to the bullpen. So Shohei will exit at 102 pitches. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. Let's talk about sex. As you get a little older, things tend to work a little differently. I felt shame, embarrassment, guilt. Like something had been knocked out from underneath me. What Hims does is says, hey, look, don't worry about it. We got this part covered 100% online. The whole process was very discreet. It made me feel like I'm a rock star. This product has changed my life. When it kicked in, I said, yeah, I'm back. I remember this feeling. Get started today at 4 Looks like he'll stay in the game overall, just not on the mound as he leaves after throwing 102 pitches over six and a third innings. He gives way to Jacob Webb here in the seventh. And because of it, and it's an injury on the pitching side, take out for Shohei Otani. Webb has as much time, although he probably was already ready. He doesn't look terribly alarmed. He's sitting in the dugout with Ipe. It doesn't seem to be. Anything overwhelmingly wrong here. If you see him, he's looking at his finger. I think part of it because he threw a lot more splitters today, and it was a really, really good pitch today. His next start would be next week in San Diego. And then he wouldn't pitch again until after the All-Star break. With an off day next Thursday, the Angels can play with some extra time after the next start. For Otani. He's out of the game as far as pitching goes, and now Jake Berger faces Jacob Webb. He saw Webb work an inning yesterday. A good pitch to start the night against Berger. Webb worked a 1 2 3 eighth inning, had two strikeouts last night. And the Angels will now need eight outs from the bullpen. Steer this one into the garage. 
Ground ball, left side, Fletcher with a dive, has it, throws to third, it is in time! What a play. Fletch, great instincts, they're going to take a look at it. Menace is like he's not sure, thought he got him. They got to look at it though. Fletcher did not have a lot on the throw. The White Sox are still holding. They haven't asked yet. Now they have. Chicago is challenging the out call at third base. He's out. Oh, he's definitely out. He's out. Oh, he's 100%. Yeah, he's definitely out on that one. It took him in as a moment to get to the base on sort of a pop-up slide. You see the ball hitting the webbing of Renjifo's glove there before Jimenez slides in. You know, it's the fact that he went into a pop-up slide that made him out had he run or at least slid straight to the bag with his foot out. And he might a, have gotten there. That was an incredible play by Fletch. His instincts, we talk about it so often, whether he's at the plate or in the field or on the bases. What a great play that was. Well, after the Neto injury, this made a lot of sense to have Fletcher come after back. After review, the call on the field is confirmed. And that is our Arco top tier play of the night. David Fletcher, an outstanding play. Good job by Luis Renjifo to get the third. That's going to be your only play at third base. And that pop slide, that foot went up just enough to get the force out. Third base. Well, great play by Fletcher. Now two outs in the batter, Gavin Sheets. Strike one from Jacob Webb. Strike two, a swing and a miss on the changeup. That's Webb's best offering, especially to a lefty. Try to get one. Yeah, it's a good try to get a chase on that one. <laughs> Line toward right center, base hit for Sheets. It will score a run. Frazier comes home, Berger goes to third. It's a one run game. Try to go upstairs with a fastball, and Sheets did a really good job as far as bringing his hands up and making contact on that one. That's how strong he is. Got him a chase out of the zone, but made contact. Went away from his changeup, jumped on a fastball. Shoulder high, and Sheets tomahawked it for a base hit. Now he comes out. And the White Sox send Adam Hazley to pinch run. That run is charged to Otani. Now, Vesandras can be a pesky hitter. Over 2,000 career hits. Jacob Webb starts him with a strike. He hasn't had much offense this year. Had a pretty good year last year, which is why the White Sox wanted to bring him back this season. Ground ball to second. Brandon Drury has it. The Angels get out of the inning with the lead. But the White Sox score one, and now it's a one run game. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals.
We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download game time now. They said optical shops weren't very inviting. So we, Warby Parker, created ones that were. They said prescription eyewear was too expensive. So we offered more affordable glasses, contacts, and eye exams. They said opticians weren't always friendly. So we hired only the friendliest and the most knowledgeable. And finally, they said the whole experience was just kind of unpleasant. So we set out to change that too. Visit a Warby Parker store and see for yourself. and stay to enjoy a post-game Saturday night fireworks show driven by your helpful SoCal Honda dealers. Visit angels.com slash promotions for more details. White Sox make some changes as Pedro Griffol is out trying to explain to the home plate umpire what the changes are. Roberto Ortiz trying to keep track of it all. Sebi Zavala is the new catcher. I would imagine Zavala would hit eighth where Sheets had been. Zach Remillard goes in and I would imagine that he would bat sixth where Grandall had been just to get Zavala further down the order would be my guess. Kind of a double switch to put Remillard in the game at third. Both pinch runners come out of the game. Frazier and Hazley. Neither one stayed in. Yeah you're looking for those insurance runs now. The White Sox got right back in the game. That run, one run there. The Angels are 10 and 5 in games where Shohei has been the starting pitcher this year. In the five losses, they have combined for a total of nine runs. In those games they haven't won, it's not because of the pitcher, it's been because the offense hasn't provided for him. Demoniak gets a line drive to right, but right at Eloy Jimenez. And there's one out. When you go back to Shohei Otani with him coming to play now, what he did in his first at bat against Kopech. 1 0 fastball down the heart of the plate. So he checks it, watches it, and then he gets that 2 1 fastball, the exact same spot, same exact velocity on the fastball, and Shohei did not miss that one. We showed it before where Shohei Otani, the pitcher, will set up pitchers in the hitting position, and he did, and he hit it out. Our Kia player profile Shohei has been launching fastballs a dozen homers off of those and 10 off the breaking ball to 27 already for the year. And Shohei Otani is well on the pace to set a new Angels single season home run record this year. He almost got to it a couple of years ago. Troy Gloss still stands at the top spot on that list. Outstanding offensive game already for Shohei. Homer. Home run, walk in a single. And that single was about 110, 111 miles per hour exit velocity. Remember, he touched 99 on a fastball today. Toussaint drops in a curve. Toussaint was with Cleveland and made one start, and then he got DFA'd. Otani hits one in the air, left center field, hit well. Robert is back, so is Benintendi. Let's go! Shohei Otani with his second of the night. And the Angels add to the lead. It's three to one. Kabuto time, indescribable how great Shohei Otani is. Home run, <laughs> left center. That is just unreal. <laughs> he is not human. 
And it picture taken. Oh, my word. <laughs> you know, the Angels, right before that swing, they just announced that Shohei left the game from a pitching standpoint due to a cracked fingernail. Well, he crushed that baseball. Took it out on the baseball. I don't blame him. That is absurd. 28 home runs. He has hit 13 in June. That ties the franchise record for the most home runs in any month. <laughs> he still has a few days here before the calendar flips to July to set a new franchise record for home runs in a single month. It's just wow. Just wow. That's all you can <laughs> describe him. <laughs> Four hundred four feet if his fingernail wasn't cracked. Might have hit it four fifty four. I mean what a swing this is again by Shohei. I mean it's a pitch down and away and still that strong. And remember he went six and a third on the mound today with ten punch outs. So you know the lower half should be tired. But it wasn't. That is the first time Shohei has had a multi home run game. Where he has been the starting pitcher. Kind of one handed that ball. Yeah, Ipe's going, yeah, you hit that ball pretty good, huh? Yeah, with one arm. <laughs> it's, it's absurd. Yes. Well, you just can't take it for granted. You, you really have to marvel every time. Because it's never been done before. There's been so many players, greats of the greats of the greats. And no one has done what this guy has done. It's unbelievable. I mean, that's the other way on a pitch down and away. I, I love the reaction for the fans. That was that was amazing. Uh, his fans have really saluted him tonight. It was a big ovation after he came off the mound. It is Japanese Heritage Night. And look at that. Still with that great sense of humor he has, especially with Patrick Sandoval. I love that. I don't, I've never seen an MVP award solidified in, in June. He's so, he's, there's no way anybody can win the MVP this year. In the American League, I mean, he is an absolute terror right now. I think they're going to the bullpen here again. He he's, he's unreal. Tuki Toussaint giving up a hit as a White Sox pitcher for the first time. And Pedro Grafal will go to his bullpen in a two-run game. If you love baseball, you need to watch Baseball Show of Record, MLB Tonight. We've got a bunch of games kicking off. Who gets you ready to start the evening? These guys. With Harold Reynolds, I'm Adnan Burke. Good to have you with us. Join Harold and Adnan for a first look at the night's matchups. Shohei Otani. We're going to talk about this guy forever. First take from the players. Oh, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. And the first of many breakdowns. Let's put this in perspective. Then, as your game night continues, stay tuned for the ultimate late night baseball party. Party, oh, with live look-ins to the night's biggest moments. MLB Tonight takes you live inside the park. The best <laughs> interviews. I've never asked a player, do you need a blanket? It is no, kind of cold out the there. Polar bear. And cutting-edge analysis from TV's best former players fresh off the field. Get your hands up. There's nothing quite like MLB Tonight. That is awesome. This one takes the cake. This is going to be a big deal tonight. Exactly. You can't <laughs> top that. Can't top MLB Tonight. Every night on MLB Network.
It has been showtime almost on another level tonight. In a game where Shohei Otani has allowed one run in six and a third innings while striking out ten, he's also hit two home runs. And the Angels have a three to one lead. Yeah, I was on high heat with Alana Rizzo this morning, Wayne, and, and she asked me to describe Shohei Otani. I said, there's times where you just don't feel like he's real. Well, that's one of those times going right now for Shohei. Two home runs, a single walk, six and a third, ten strikeouts in the game on the mound. That is not real. Mike Mustakas bats with a man on. Brandon Drury walking against Tucson. Now Drury comes out of the game. Andrew Velasquez goes in as a pinch runner. So Velasquez and Fletcher will be the double play combination here. Much more of the norm to take out a batter for defensive purposes when you're the team that's winning, not when you're the team that's behind, like the White Sox have done. They took Yasmani Grandal and Gavin Sheets out of this game. Two major threats hit the ball out of the ballpark. And last night, Pedro Griffal did the opposite. He took out Zavala for Grandal when they needed defense in a tie game. Well, that's their problem. Mike Mustakas yes. at the plate. <laughs> the count one ball, no strikes. That's 2 0 on Mustakas, who made his Angels debut yesterday. Chatsworth High School in Los Angeles. Velasquez is running. Zavala's throw is not in time. Andrew Velasquez steals the base. Gets in the scoring position for Mustakas as you try to get those extra runs here. Angels lead by two. Kristavinsky is throwing now in the Angel bullpen. He was a good outing. Last couple have been a little rougher for Davinsky. It's been so good. He's going to run into some trouble at some point. And he'll try to get back on track tonight. His 12th game versus the White Sox in his career got an ERA exactly three. Mustakas with a ground ball, pace hit. Velasquez around third, heads for the plate. He'll score easily. Mike Mustakas has his first RBI as an angel. And the Halo lead is 4-1. to one. Stayed on this baseball, gets it through the middle for an RBI single for Moose. And the fans chanting Moose. You had a chance to talk to him today, Erica and I. For upcoming Angels Weekly, and he said he was so thrilled to be able to put on this Angel uniform and see the fan support he's getting already. He's a local kid. He has got a great pedigree. I mean, he's been a three-time All-Star. He's won a World Series. And it's a signal, along with Escobar, that this team's going for it. They're, they're in the race. They are very much a part of the playoff picture. And over the next month, as we get closer to the trade deadline, they're not done. They're going to go for it. Two balls, no strikes on Taylor Ward. Now it's taking off as the ball goes down the right field line. Zavala just chucked it into the corner, and Mustakis goes all the way to third. Well, the boost was definitely loose there. <laughs> all the way to third. <laughs> He had a big smile when he got the third base. Secondary lead, the little back pick. And no one quite ready. That burger wasn't even looking. No. Zavala just casually threw it. It wasn't one of those aggressive back picks that you normally see from a catcher. He just casually tossed it to first, trying to catch Mustaka's napping. Instead, he caught Burger napping. Oh! <laughs> 
keep thinking of taking a, have a burger and nap. <laughs> taking a nap after a burger. <laughs> the White Sox, aside from Robert, who could win a gold glove this year, they've been a horrid defensive team. They enter tonight with minus 28 defensive runs saved. Only the Oakland A's have been a worse defensive team. There's ball four to Ward. The tenth walk tonight from a White Sox pitcher. The final week of the 2023 Scots MLB All-Star Ballot is here. Decide if Mike Trout is in the starting lineup this summer by scanning that QR code or vote daily at MLB.com slash vote. Trout is in first place among American League outfielders in phase two of the voting. Yeah, you got to get Mike Trout. When you talk about all-star games, the very best players, Mike Trout deserves to be there. So get back out there and vote for Trout. Get him in the all-star game. The voting ends on Thursday morning, and one of the early introductions to Mike Trout's big league career came 11 years ago tonight. Flying to rob J.J. Hardy of a home run in Baltimore. And very much a happy Jerry Weaver on that play. <laughs> he, what a play. Take our word for it. Yes. A permanent scowl hey, of Jared Weaver. Tory Hunter again, too. Bob <laughs> there. Come over and say, you know, Mike, I used to do that quite a bit. But then Trout goes, yeah, I don't know how high you went up on that wall. But he did so. But Trout went way up above the wall on that one. Trout not in the lineup tonight, but very well. Could be and should be in the All-Star game in a couple weeks in Seattle. And voting ends Thursday morning for phase two of the voting. Hunter Renfro swings and misses on 98 mile an hour sinker from Gregory Santos. There's a lot of base hit and a walk to the first two batters that he's faced. Well, I love that reaction by the fans with Mike Moustakas. He's already the guy that everyone wants to get rally behind. And RBI single over to third base. Fans are into this game. Shohei is dominating. Line to third, caught by Remillard. Throw to first, not in time. And Renfro with a hard hit out. Uh, Luis Renjifo will be the batter. Renjifo's got a triple and a run score tonight. Stockus with an RBI base hit in this inning. Shohei hit his second home run. Ifo swings and misses. Otani entered the night hitting 375 in games that he has pitched, and now he has gone three for three tonight. So he's at the average up to 407 in games that he has pitched in this year. Batting average overall this season, 304. <laughs> Leading the world in home runs, RBIs, OPS. Oh, yeah. 20, 127 strikeouts, too, on the season. And the American League's leading hitter is Austin Hayes of the Orioles batting 319. Bo Bichette, Yandy Diaz also ahead of Shohei in batting average. And Shohei is first. MLB tonight. That is awesome. This one takes the cake. This is going to be a big deal tonight. Exactly. You can't <laughs> top that. Can't top MLB tonight. Every night on MLB Network. Jeremy Pena, the world champion shortstop with movie star presencia. Every Dominican wants to grow up and play baseball, bro. When I was 13, I was like, the plan is to get to the big leagues. I love seeing young Dominicans win, bro, because I'm an old Dominican. You know that Dominican everyone plays baseball. I was just looking forward to playing again, man. This is gonna be a fun year. Salud a la vida más linda. Salud, hermano.
Devo with some new ink today, and here is why. Devo and Sam Bachman visited a local children's hospital earlier today, and Chris had the patients sign his arm. You can see it on the inside of his right forearm there. After visiting the hospital today, for those who were too young to sign, he had Sam sign their name on their behalf. The two of them also both shaved their heads together after they left the hospital to show support for the kids. These two incredible humans doing great things in the community earlier today. Yeah, that gives you goosebumps. And I saw Sam Bachman's head earlier today. Same thing with Chris Davinsky. That is amazing what they did. That really is. That is some special work from Chris Davinsky and Sam Bachman today. Velasquez is the new shortstop. As Fletcher moves to second base, the Angels trying to beef up their defense with a lead. And there's a strike from Davinsky on the changeup. Check swing, strike three. Punched out by Roberto Ortiz. Benintendi strikes out. So one away, and here's a quick word from Kia. The turbocharged, tech-inspired Kia Forte. Tim Anderson, the battery, has struck out three times tonight. Davinsky giving back to the community, a community that has certainly helped him out out of Cerritos, California, went to Gar High School, worked as a security guard here at Angel Stadium. Anderson with a bouncer to third, Luis Renjifo with a strong arm shows it off. And he's been making some strong throws across the diamond here. The series so far for Renjifo. And two outs in the batter will be Robert. We talked about Davinsky being a great mover. He can move furniture. It's because his dad owns a moving company in Southern California. And anybody that's ever moved furniture like that, it's one of the toughest jobs. I mean, that is extremely tough. Luis Robert, the batter here in the eighth inning. Waves out a slider, and it's 0 and 2. He tried to get a chase hill on that one after the slider just off the plate and he swung in and why not try to get a chase swing and a miss Robert strikes out Chris Davinsky back on track with a one two three eight. Biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning every night on MLB.tv. It's the Modern Baseball Show for the modern baseball fan. Off base with interviews and coverage of baseball's hottest stars. I've done a couple interviews in my life. This probably is the most fun I've ever been a part of. Only on MLB Network.
Angels baseball and Valley Sports brought to you by Spectrum One, Internet Advanced Wi-Fi Mobile for just $49.99 a month. Visit Spectrum.com. And by Pacifico, rich golden lager brewed for those who follow their own path. Pacifico, live life, anchors up. The ultimate version of following your own path. Shohei Otani tonight, two home runs, 10 strikeouts. Statcast powered by Google Cloud shows you something that is just completely silly. Yeah, it's impossible. You'll never see that. I mean, it's incredible. 10 strikeouts, four with a splitter, three cutter, two sweeper, four seamer, and then two home runs. It's a small list of pitchers who have had 10 strikeout games and multi home run games in the same game. It's happened a couple of times recently with Madison Bumgarner and Zach Ranke. That's all fine and good. But dating back to the start of last season, Shohei has the most 10 strikeout games in the major leagues. And this year, he has the most home runs in the major yep. leagues. So it's not just that he's done it all in one night, it's that it has compounded the way that it has for Shohei. And it has been showtime. And a perfect environment here, a perfect setting here tonight with Japanese Heritage Night here at the Big A and Shohei Otani. Wow. <laughs> Phil Nevin's going, man, you're unbelievably good. <laughs> Phil Nevin's going to hug him, and he might never let go. Three said, How did you hit that out? You split your fingernail like that, and you still hit a ball that far? <laughs> Ten strikeout night. Shohei has a 302 ERA after allowing just one run tonight and a 304 batting average. With 28 home runs, major league high. He is now 64 RBIs. Major League leader in that category. Ronaldo Lopez, the new pitcher for the White Sox, who was the losing pitcher yesterday thanks to a walk off wild pitch. Angels will need a base runner in this inning to give Shohei an at bat another at bat he's three for three tonight with those two home runs. And he had to wait quickly in that dugout. Marcus Timms and Shohei are looking down to make sure everyone's OK. Head off the facing of the camera well I think. Chopper to third as Zach Remillard throws it across. One out. Embrace your inner all-star. The action begins with the T-Mobile Home Run Derby, ESPN, July 10th at 4 p.m. Pacific. Then catch the 93rd MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard, July 11th at 4 p.m. Pacific on Fox. Shohei will be at the All-Star Game. Has participated in the Home Run Derby before Coors Field a couple of years ago. Julio Rodriguez, the hometown star for the Mariners, will be in the home run derby. I'm sure that roster will be announced soon after the all star roster has come out, I believe, Sunday. Fletcher with a little squibbing ground ball. Remillar takes care of it and throws out Fletcher. So two outs. Moniak will have to reach base to give Otani another at bat. The Yankees lost tonight, so as far as the wild yes. card goes. And the Angels can gain ground on the Yankees, the Blue Jays, and the Astros. At this point at the halfway mark, they would be in the postseason. The Halos that they hold on to this lead. They would be tied with the Yankees for the second wild card spot. And I think ahead to some of these games that are coming up for the Angels in the month of July. Well, they have the Yankees and the Astros in the first homestand right after the All-Star break. Those are big games, yeah. especially, and then they go to Toronto at the end of July, especially because there is no tie-breaking scenario. It's head-to-head -head matchups. Yeah. There's no more game 163 tiebreaker. You have to have a better record in the head to head games to break the tie in your favor as Estevez gets ready in the bullpen. So those games against Houston, the Yankees, the Blue Jays, those are monstrous games yeah. now. Especially considered all three of those teams have got winning records against the Angels so far. 
Moniak strikes out. Don't sleep on the division either. The Yankees only, or the Angels only five back in the AL West. Imagine an entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. And it's gone! With live look-ins to clutch at bats. A walk-off flare! And players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long. Got something to say about the game? I want to hear that. Don't just talk about it. Get caught up so we can talk about it on the show. Intentional talk about it. I think this is when opportunity arises. Join the conversation with Intentional Talk on MLB Network. We're watching. We're watching. MLB Big Inning brings you the biggest plays of the night, live as they happen. Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. It's nonstop action on MLB Big Inning, every night on MLB.tv. Jeremy Pena, the world champion shortstop with movie star presencia. Every Dominican wants to grow up and play baseball, bro. When I was 13, I was like, the plan is to get to the big leagues. I love seeing young Dominicans win, bro, because I'm an old Dominican. You know that Dominican everyone plays pelota. I was just looking forward to playing again, man. This is going to be a fun year. Salud a la vida más linda. Salud, hermano. Today, well, show me the way, and Shohei showed the way to a potential W here today with two home runs, and a single, a walk at the plate on the mound. Six and a third, one run allowed, ten strikeouts. Show me the way. We well, certainly did so far in the night. Carlos Estevez has a chance at an Angels record tonight. If he gets his 20th save, it'll be the most consecutive successful save conversions to start a season in franchise history breaking Lee Smith's 1995 record. Carlos Estevez should be very in tune to the all star roster selection show on Sunday because his name could get called too. Otani has already been selected as a starter trout likely will be by the end of voting on Thursday morning. And Estevez should be right there along with those two as Eloy Jimenez leads off the top of the nine. Jimenez, the one batter today for the White Sox, has been very, very good. A double against Shohei down the line and a line drive right back up the middle against Shohei Otani. Two for three. Uh, he can swing the bat. There's no question. This guy can really hit. And he swings and hits this one to the gap in left center field. So Eloy Jimenez having. A strong night at the plate three hits including two doubles as he begins the top of the ninth inning. <laughs> Stay right on this pitch is hit three baseballs really well today. A couple doubles. I've given them 11 now on the season. Well, keep in mind, this is getting near the spot in the order for the White Sox where they removed a couple of their better hitters for pinch runners when they were trailing in this game. So they'll have to try to come back here without some of their better hitters. Grandall is out of the game. Gavin Sheets is out of the game. So that could come into play here in the top of the ninth inning against Carlos Estevez. Vaughn has a base hit, and now the tying run will come to the plate. Jimenez on his way home. He'll score. It's four to two as Estevez has given up a run. And with that pitch, goes the other way. An RBI single on a 98 mile an hour fastball. Stevez did come in the game yesterday. He only threw five pitches. It was a very quick inning as he ended up earning the win. Trying to reach 20 for 20 in save tries. Here's Zach Remillard. He looks at a strike. Shohei is in line for the win. It would be his seventh. 
Estevez still needs to get three outs here against the bottom part of the White Sox order now. Jake Berger has power. He's on deck. Well, you love a ground ball double play right here. Hit a hard up the middle. It's past Fletcher. It's another hit for the White Sox. Three in a row to start the ninth inning against Carlos Estevez. Now some real trouble brewing as the Angels try to hold this lead. Here comes Matt Wise. The slider just went right back up the middle again. Jake Berger is 0 for 3. He's 3 for his last 38. He has a lot of power. 17 home runs from Berger this year. On the other side of that, doesn't run very well, so ground ball at somebody could create a couple of outs. And tight here late at Angel Stadium in the top of the ninth. All one from Carlos Estevez. Steves has been perfect in save tries this year. He's trying to stay that way in number 20. Swing and a miss by Berger. Fastball at 99. He ran that just above the strike zone there. On deck is Sebi Zavala, then Elvis Andrews. Swing and a miss by Berger. It's one and two. Trying to amp it up there to get the job done now. Berger calling time with two strikes. Ball to the right side. Fletcher able to get to it. Then he bobbles, throws too late to first. Everybody's safe. He was thinking about throwing to second base until that bobble. And as he came back down with the baseball, he took a shot at first. But that was too late. And now the White Sox have the bases loaded with nobody out. And yeah, it's all he's trying to do is think about it, just keeping that force out at second base, but on the transfer, unable to get a grip of the baseball. Give Berger a hit. It's the fourth of the inning. And now Zavala fouls one off. Wow, nice play by a fan here. For a great defensive play here by the Halos. Four straight hits have begun the top of the ninth. The White Sox have life. The Angels trying to win back-to-back -back games to start this series. 0-2 on Sebi Zavala. Stevez just trying to reset, get an out, get a couple of outs. Trying to save it on Shohei's big night. And Zavala fouls off another. Oh, the strike zone on that slider. Thirteen pitches for Estevez, and in that time, he's already given up four hits. Slider was up and out. And it's one ball, two strikes. Trying to miss strike three. Challenge Zavala with a fastball right down the middle and punched him out. One away. That's a huge strikeout there for Carlos Estevez. Stay back. Kept that front shoulder in. Great leverage and a lot on that fastball. Now it's Elvis Andrews, the batter, 0 for 2 tonight. He has walked. How are you still on the show? 
Andrews has not hit into a double play this year. Still has pretty good speed. Takes a strike. Used to be a guy that would hit into double plays, though. In one year, he actually almost led the majors in stolen bases and double plays, something that's only been done a couple of times in history. He got close. Swings and misses for strike two. That's a couple of times Estevez has kind of awkwardly landed. One time he fell almost all the way off the mound. He's really trying to overthrow here and drive towards home plate. And you see, when he lifts that landing spot, there's been a number of different arms in this game. Slid there. Ground ball to short. Velasquez to Fletcher for one. Over the first two. Save and that to the White Sox. The Angels hold them off in the ninth. They've won back-to-back -back games to start this series. And save number 20 for Carlos Estevez sets an Angels record. He holds it down on Shohei's big night. Oh, what a job turning that double play ball. No panic, a big strikeout, then a ground ball double play by Carlos Estevez. Quick flip by Squid over to Fletch, a low throw, but then a transfer able to get a very quick runner going down the line. What a game. This is one of those games yet has half to win. Shohei was that special. Incredible night by Shohei Otani. All smiles for Shohei. This was his stage tonight. His performance carried the Angels to victory. Otani struck out 10 on the mound. He earns the victory. He hits two home runs in this game. <laughs> There's the whole franchise right there. Mike <laughs> Trout and Shohei Otani celebrating the Angels' 44th win in their 81st game. Exactly halfway through, and this team on pace for 88 wins. Shohei on pace for 56 homers. He started this game with a couple of strikeouts and then started teeing off. An indescribable night for Shohei Otani. Three for three, two home runs, a single, a walk. Mammoth home run to right center. The other way on a pretty good pitch to left center. Unreal game for Shohei. Shohei very clearly our Toyota player of the game. He and Ipe are standing by right now with Erica Weston. All right, guys, thanks very much. Shohei, what a night for you pitching on the mound, your first multi-home run game as a pitcher. How much was that just a matter of it happening? You knew that you were going to hit multiple home runs a night you were on the mound. あの、ま、今年は打席もいい内容多いですし、え、ま、いい打席を多く送れてるなと思ってます。いや、ただピッチプレイウェルトゥデイ、エンドデイズアイピッチアイブンヘニングプレイウェルトゥデイスイヤー